April Fools continues, guys. Welcome to a baldy kind of mood. Now, you, you tuned in right. It's a toy kind of mood. I'm stepping in for Trad tonight and for Bobby. They both uh, had other commitments. And I think they accidentally added me to the chat and asked me to host tonight. And I said yes. So here I am. And let's bring in the boys that you guys know and love. We got KJ, Black King. Yes, look. Yo, what's <laughs> up? And we've got Sarlacc Spec. What's Boy up, Optics. What is going on, everybody? I uh, hope, hopefully, I'm not freaking you neighbors out. <laughs> and uh, listen, I've never, ever, ever done this before, so we're gonna have a couple hiccups, uh, maybe a couple stops along the way, but we'll have a little bit of fun tonight. Oh yeah, we'll be good too. How's everybody's week? Everybody's good. No, things so are good. We, we um, gotta get KJ on board with the Bic, and then we can turn this into a baldy kind of mood. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would work really, really well. So, um, no, man. like, if if that ever happens, it will not grow back. Trust me. I'm, <laughs> I am. Yeah, you know what? That's what happened to me. Uh, once I shaved it, that was it. It was all done. Yep. So, uh, let's see here. We are doing uh, WonderCon. Right, we're gonna okay. talk about WonderCon now. Listen, I got a little bit of a um, a little bit of a tutorial from Trav on how to do this. But listen, if this is um, I don't know if this is a a, a car wreck, a train wreck, <laughs> you guys can look away. You guys can keep watching. But listen, we're gonna have some fun tonight. Okay. And yes, somebody's already saying vamp stand. <laughs> <laughs> We are spamming you guys tonight. We're yeah, yeah. Spamming you guys. Hey, let's give some love to the chat real quick. Give me about 25 seconds to say hello to the chat. Uh, shout out to Mike O Ring Ghostbusters. Uh, I will be manning the till as Toy Kind of Mood today. Four in the box ready to go. They be fast and rings be O. Uh, Stanley says, don't cross the fan streams. Shout out to Spec. Uh, yep. Toy Optics getting some love. Subscribe. Instagram Toy Optics. Shout out to Tony's Figs. What's going on, fellow collective subscribers and hunters? Mike the Hunter voice. I'm glad we got Mike the Hunter back, man. Um, Cobra Law in the house. We need pie. What's up with the punch and pie? What's going on? What's what's, what's that? South Park reference? Oh, okay, that's right. Um, see, that's what white people be watching, man. I don't watch South Park. I watch the Boondocks. Uh, what's up, fellas? Uh, FC Viper. Hello. Shout out to Aaron. Thanks for joining us, man. Classified ferrets. We're going to get up into all that. Fam spam. Bring in the heat. Shout out to the homie Traff. Shout out to Chris D'Amato, who's laughing at your antics, Spec. And that's pretty much it. All right, guys. All right. So, WonderCon, what did you guys think? Were you guys impressed? Were you guys a little deflated? What were your thoughts? I know what some people were deflated. But you've got this con. It's been around forever. It's always like <clears throat> if you if you get the professional badge for Comic Con, it's it goes hand in hand with WonderCon. You also get opened up to to be able to get a badge for WonderCon. I assume that's because it's the same company doing the events. They so, kind of got hand in hand. Yeah, it's it's been around. I kind of look at it as car shows, right? The big car show is the New York Auto Show, if I remember correctly. Like, that is the, the end-all, be-all, the major car show for the year. But over time, like, Los Angeles car show has started getting reveals and Chicago. And so, like, they started spreading the world a little bit. Not. Yeah. And so, or no, I'm sorry, is the Detroit Auto Show, not New York. Detroit. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kobo Hall, where you get the famous Kobo cough every time you walk in there. I should know. I got it. <laughs> um, the uh, So I kind of feel like Hasbro saw an opportunity. You know, I, I think that San Diego Comic-Con is plateauing, maybe. You know, it's still the major con. They're still going to do all their big releases, exclusives, whatever. But I know that, like, there was a movement. A lot of people wanted it to come to L.A. where, 
was bigger, more space, more hotel accommodations. Yeah, it used to yeah. be a kamikaze, right? Uh, Stan Lee's kamikaze, and then it became LA Comic Con. Yeah, but they wanted to move the San Diego Comic Con, like the lease contract, whatever was up, and there was talk. Anyway, um, so I I appreciate that Hasbro decided to pick another con, fly out members of the team, have a small panel, show some love, do a couple reveals. You know, didn't didn't need to be huge, and I'm sure it was. Uh, yeah, but attack. they could have given us more. Yeah, I could. You know, the, the other thing is, is that they, they were all stuck on a time limit, and it was just like, yeah. you know, Marvel took up a lot of that time, and is that thing whoever got to go first, and then boom, 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 and then by the time it got to like GI Joe, Emily was just like, okay, da 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 da, -da done. Oh, yeah. I feel bad about that. Here's a reveal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, was, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think we're gonna get to some of that stuff. Um, we had uh, Travis really, really working hard uh, behind the scenes, trying to get me caught up in a very short amount of time. So um, I'm going to play around th with these slides. I'm sure we'll hear in the chat if I'm doing okay or not, but you can never replace an MC as good as Travis. So Yeah, you can. I do it all the time. <laughs> uh, Kidding, Trapster. Love you. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna attempt to pull up my first slide here which is something that um i'm excited about <laughs> whoops that's the wrong slide but no, the vamp weird. guard what do you guys think of this vamp guard this double decker uh yeah. no functionality to it at all and size simply matters what do you guys think of that I think it's perfect. It's value size, like it's Costco size. This is a Kirkland signature vamp, right here. Yeah, like you so get this. this yeah. Was uh, I found out this is a Kohl's exclusive, so um, <laughs> you you can use your Kohl's cash on this. It should drop it down from the one eighty three ninety nine price point. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this is a beauty. I, I heard Iron Ken was crying about it, but then started messaging people to see if they'd give him one for free. Well, I, yeah, I sent him one. I don't know. I got three stacks of clean axe. <laughs> so we can ship that for free to Iron Ken. <laughs> so uh, actually, there was something really exciting at WonderCon. I'm going to attempt to go to the next slide here. Um, well, this is the WonderCon slide. And really cool artwork. Uh, it, it sounded like it was going to be a really fun event, but I did hear a lot of uh, people were a little bit deflated by some of the reveals. Yeah, yeah. Give or but take. There was, there was one I was super excited about, and it's these bad boys right here. So... Um, the O-rings are so dead, they're so dead that they're bringing in the Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what do you guys think of the, the Ghostbusters O-rings? This was a surprise for me. Uh, if I may, let me go full screen just for a little bit. Do it. Um, listen, I've been collecting O-rings since I existed, basically. I still have some of my original... Ghostbusters O-rings. Correct me if I'm mistaken, uh, but Visionaries were O-rings, right? Oh, that's a good question. Thanks. I remember Thanks. Visionaries. Um, but, but I'm just saying, like, these just take me back to my childhood. I can't believe these are the first O-ring Ghostbusters we're getting. I get it. Is like that I still have some of the original Kenner ones. I think uh, the Beetlejuice action figures were kind of like the same structure, but this is like parallel universe type stuff like there's a dimension where kids got to play with o-ring ghostbusters back in 1984 85 and we're just now getting our hands on it yeah i listen this this got the fanboy in me i mean i still love o-rings um i don't i don't add to what i um have for gi joe from outside of what i got as a kid does that make sense i don't I don't go to shows and grab more figures. I just have what I have from my childhood. But I I remember being a kid thinking, dude, what if they did like uh, the Thundercats or 
what if they did like these different brands as O-rings? They would complement the G.I. Joe's because my biggest collection was G.I. Joe. What about you guys? Did you guys ever think like that? Like what if they kind of crossed over? I did. I mean, there was no other toy that had the articulation or the playability or the ease of getting into like G.I. Joe did, right? Right. <clears throat> um, I mean, my other love was Transformers. Well, I had a lot of loves, but like Transformers, it was two toys in one, but it was a whole other thing. Yeah, and yeah. you just couldn't be. And, and even they got smaller. Yeah. and you, But you couldn't beat those three and a quarter action figures that could bend at the knee and at the elbow and swivel and yeah. get into their vehicles and their play sets and just have these big massive battles and so yeah i was always i was always just like why didn't star wars do this yeah and then it, it other things it was like how come there aren't other toy lines that are following this format and then everything can play together and and masters of the universe that was uh that was like my original love and then I, I got a nice hand-me-down of the 82, 83 collection. Um, I mean, this is why I, I collect now is based on the O-rings. So this definitely was a surprise. It was a nice surprise. Um, I'm excited by this one. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm conflicted at the same time because like you, like <clears throat> I was getting the classic mm -hmm. when Hasbro was doing the retro O-rings. I did order, I got whatever they put out and I'd get them and then I'd open them and then I'd be like, okay, these are cool and they're somewhat nostalgic, but now I understand why I collect the classified and these just don't have that it factor that they used to have compared to what classified does now. Okay. Right. And so now the only time I get an O-ring is when they do the Transformers crossovers mm -hmm. yeah. and which is another fanboy dream for me. Yeah, uh, but absolutely. And it's one, and of, it's one of those things. Uh, this is one of those things like a TV show nowadays. I want an ending. So I want season one, season two, okay. maybe season three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can go with Ghostbusters season one here. Once you start adding and then you start adding extra figures... Uh, I'm not going to be interested that much later. Right. You know, I already know that. So I think a lot of collectors these days already know what their limits are. So give us this set, maybe give us a complimentary set and then move on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this seems like a very limited, you know, here's your Ghostbuster four pack. Here's your Ecto one that scales with them and, mm -hmm. and the proton packs go on this, the gurney the in gurney. the back. And yeah. And uh, I just want to do the a the one. There's a picture yeah. of it right there in yeah. the background. Um, great packaging, by the way. Ken Best had said a little concerned about the price, considering how expensive the Joes were. And if I remember correctly, Emily said that this four pack is forty five bucks. Yeah, Ecto's a hundred. Is the Ecto a yeah. hundred? I didn't know how much the Ecto was. <clears throat> that's the bummer part. The Ecto is a hundred, but like these four figures for forty five bucks, that's. That's, That's good. Pretty, it's a little over ten dollars yeah. a figure, right? Yeah. It's, uh, I remember lots yeah. of figure. It's the, hard uh, to say no to that. Yeah, the uh, collectors club they had a three pack of the Night Stalkers. They were going for like one fifty on Big Bad Toy Store, right? It's like it just really depends. They could have gotten greedy. I'm glad they didn't. I'll pay ten bucks an O ring figure. Like I'm already seeing more play value with putting them with the rest of my one eighteen collection, right? Well, when the plasma. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that if you look at the four figures here, whether we're looking at this slide or a little close up here, it's all bucks. the same body mold. So you can give people what they want at an economic price, right? You can give us some really cool looking figures. You can revisit some of the GI Joes and still do it at a price point that's not killing people's wallets. Uh, Airborne is saying the Ecto is 65. Nice profile picture, Airborne. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, <laughs> 65, I think a lot of us can do that, right? That's I, not yeah. bad. I mean, you're looking at, so if, if that's all said and done, you're looking at about, what, 110 before tax for, yeah. for the Ecto one and all four Ghostbusters. And 
you can sit there and say, cool, I'm done. I'm out. Yeah. I don't need any more beyond this. Like, it's hard for me to say no to that, right? You know, Ghostbusters is like one of my top 10 all defining movies. Yeah. Yeah. Even uh, I'm, I liked the latest one. It gave me I what too. I wanted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a fun popcorn movie. Uh, my son loved it. So, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun at the movies. That's what it's supposed to be. We yeah. don't have to have the original four in the entire movie. No, and, and actually we got more of them than I was expecting <clears throat> because of, you know, the whole little side adventure with Ray. Like, I I was not expecting him to have as big of a role as he did, and I was surprised by <laughs> that. just wrote Crossless, Crossless Walter, Walter Peck. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the movie to me was a an episode of the cartoon with the nostalgia of the original movie, and it was just, it was a fun episode to watch but yeah. you know you always get the critics and the the complainers i was yeah. i was flabbergasted by the difference between the the critic response and the fan response you know i'm i write film reviews and i but i think i'm right there my butt's in the seat with the rest of the fans so i approach it a lot differently not everything has to be salt burn or zone of interest you can sit back and have fun and enjoy yourself well, that's the thing, but and just like any other, uh, you know, I get blasted. Travis has some film critic friend, <clears throat> and so anytime I make my disparaging comments against film critics, because I've never cared for film critics, you know, they always have to pipe up because they get butt hurt, and then they act like I'm not hurt, and it's just like, well, anytime <laughs> I say film critics, you're there, but uh, you know, the, it's it, it's a contrarian job, right? Nobody's gonna read my reviews if I don't crap on this. If I don't, if I don't take a a higher nose in the air look at something and and rip it apart and you know. uh, I, some of my favorites, they're not that. I used to love reading any cool news. You know, one of my favorites used to be uh, Drew McWeeny, who was Moriarty, and he wrote great reviews that didn't take a shit on everything. And Roger Ebert, God rest his soul, I used to love watching Cisco and Ebert. Ebert was the one in the seats. Siskel was the hoity-toity art house guy. Ebert was like, pass me that popcorn and Dr. Pepper. You know, like, and and I think those are my favorite critics. That's how I approach film criticism. Did this movie do what it was supposed to do? Did Police Academy 8 do what it was supposed to? The Police Academy reboot starring Chris Pratt that I'm just using as an example that turned out being better than it had any reason to be and is now streaming on Amazon Prime. So... I didn't see. even know yeah. that existed. It didn't exist. I'm just, just an example. Oh, you got me excited for a second. I was, like, what? I was like, put Chris Pratt in anything, right? Rated R, full frontal nudity. Did not did not see that coming. Wow. Yeah, that's that's amazing, man. But yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's it's okay to like a movie like this. It doesn't have to be, you know some yeah. indie darling that that yes you are todd you're a toy critic if you do that <laughs> oh yeah i look at godzilla x kong it did what it was supposed to do i had a fun I time haven't, i haven't made it to that one yet i do want to go no spoilers from me no it's a, a it's a popcorn <laughs> movie i mean all these movies end exactly the same way the screen fades to black and the credits roll up there's no spoiler I'm just kidding. There is no police academy reboot. I was just kidding. Y'all better start working on that. That's a freebie from me. Go ahead, make some money. Make some of that streaming money. Wow, that no, Romo, not not that guy. Not that guy. Somebody else. That's fun. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, man, let's go back to this Ecto One real quick on WonderCon because I love Eagle Moss Star Trek. They had subscription for Eagle Moss, but it was like eighteen hundred dollars or something like that. You know, and then you have one six scale Hot Toys, <clears throat> Blitzway, you name it. You can spend thousands of dollars in the Ecto-1 if you want. I just need that for my shelf, for my toy shelf, and I'll be a happy camper. Now, that will replace my uh, popcorn tin from uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, yeah. That thing did its job. It's been on my shelf. It lights up. It's a lot of fun. Uh, this one will be a little more, I guess, functional for play. And if you guys uh, saw my... My video on the vamp, you know that I play with my toys. I go outside. We actually play with it. 
Um, I think we could have a little bit of fun with this with this Ecto one. It's badass looking. It needs yeah. to be dirtier. It needs to be yes. a little more beat up. You can make it beat up if you want to. You can get some wash effects. You can get some coffee residue. Like you can, or, you can have. Fun. Or I could just go take it out in the dirt, like I would anyway. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, there that's more than fair. I mean, I think I have I have both versions of the Transformers Ectotron, the more beat up one and the clean one. And then I got I didn't get the big Lego one from the 2016 movie. I got the the original Lego idea set for the original, the smaller okay. Ecto one with the four yeah. minifigs. So there's always room for another Ecto one. There's always room. There's always room for more. All right, let's see what we got on this next slide. So this is an up close of Ray. I think that they did a really nice job with kind of presenting the guys here, right? You don't need too much detail um, to really... I, well, you know what? This detail is better than what we had as kids, and I know that the, the technology allows that. But you know this is Ray as soon as you look at him. You know, uh, you know this is Winston. You know, Egon, they did such a good job. Even Peter, uh, the way they captured Bill Murray here, really yeah. well done. Yeah, and I feel like there's a little more forgiveness in the O-ring scale for likenesses. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. why you can get away with a stalker like this. If Falcon was 118 O-ring, people would have been just A-OK. -okay. Then you take off the beer goggles and then you're like, oh my god. And you're you're right, Spec. With uh with O-ring, there's a lot more forgiveness. You're getting what you pay for, right? It's not like one of those new Haya toys for the, the G.I. Joe line where it's highly detailed. It's a miniaturized version of classified, right? But you're paying for that. There's a price for those Haya toys. Yeah. Yeah. All but right. I mean, that said, like as as you guys have already mentioned, the likenesses on these are great. You, you can you look at it and you know who it is. There isn't squinting your eyes for a second and going, "I think that's Bill Murray." It's like, no, that's Bill Murray. They kind of got the nose and the lips right. They definitely got the hairline. Yeah. And as a bald man, I can appreciate a good hairline. So they <laughs> did a nice job there. You and me both. Now, when can they start to get beards done really well? I mean, I'm I'm hoping, uh, like we saw a, a thing for the selfie series leak recently, right? That mm -hmm. wasn't WonderCon, though. That was somewhere else. Oh yeah. So some people were saying, some people were wondering if it was a leak and that they're bringing it back, and then some people were wondering if somebody didn't find an old input in a system. Well, that... it was on the internet, so it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think beards. You have to sculpt beards for them to, to look good. It's it's hard to do a good painted on beard. Like even with, um, I always like using my John Wick as an example. But it, it would have to be five o'clock shadow at the best if you're going to use paint. So otherwise, Hello, you're going to, have to use Hello, McFly. <laughs> Hello. Don't be so gullible, McFly. <laughs> Give me some O rings of that franchise. Oh man, Back to the Future O rings don't 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 give me hope. Come on, man, that would be spectacular. And the DeLorean to boot. Come on, anything that Playmobil is doing, I need one eighteen O ring of. I need a team. I need Magnum PI. All that. We, we didn't the high toys. Uh, a Biff out of it. That would be awesome. That'd be great. I gotta say, like it. Seeing those Playmobiles, it's hard to pass up on those things, man. I don't pass up on those. I collect those, and they make great gifts, too, for friends who 18, don't collect. 18, Knight Rider, Magnum P.I., Ghostbusters, the Enterprise. They had that $500 Enterprise. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah, like, uh, there's some, there's some uh, good chats or good comments in there. Um, it would oh, be go, go for it. Go for it. Delorean. Go for it, please. The, the, the comments. Have at it. I'm trying. Let's see. This. Mask O-rings. That would be amazing. Shout out to Airborne's Customs. That would be amazing. Uh, and then Chaz said that, you know, it would be dope. It would be dope, Chaz. 
So yeah, mask. Uh, Nika made uh, the one eighteen DeLorean. Nice. nice. How long ago was that? Goodness. I know that I don't there know was if some... I even say that right. It's Nika or Neka. Yeah, Neka. I always say Neka, but Neka. As a black man, I have to be careful when I say Neka. <laughs> I'll just leave it at oh, that. So many, so many jokes there. <laughs> um, I'm seeing that I'm seeing a diecast DeLorean. I'm seeing a one sixteen scale DeLorean. So that's even a little bit bigger than that. In fact, let me go ahead, if I may, share a screen. Do it. Last time I did this, it ended the stream, and then we had to do part two. Oh, God, I remember that. I'm still learning, All right. so be gentle. There we go. Yeah. There was Once a crowdfunding, I don't remember the company, for a 112th DeLorean or a 110th DeLorean that would fit the NECA figures. And I don't remember who was doing it, and I don't know what came of it. But it was like all over my Facebook feed for months. Yeah. Maybe one want, of the you can get this sucker for a pretty good price. So yeah, go ahead. Hit the hit that uh buy button. No, I buy too <laughs> much stuff. Stop. Stop playing. <laughs> Chaz, come on, man. Only I can say that, Chaz. Anyway. <laughs> I was gonna yell it out, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna piss somebody off. <laughs> FC Viper, my NECA. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's enough. All right, let's, let's. <laughs> and it just keeps going. Tell me, me. Tell me and it was a 112th. Okay, thanks, Stanley. You are my Nika. All right, that's all right. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, then Playmobil. Playmobil, listen, there's just too many good, there's too many figs. Oh, by the way, uh, Zen, you can star. So you see something you like, press that star, and that'll help us get to it a lot faster. That helps us during the stream. You're oh, seeing God. behind the curtains, folks. So but that's all you okay. get. I say it. Guys, I'm learning on the job here. There is no wow. wizard. So, Everybody Russell, hey. Gentle. Russell, the uh, who is it? Ramen Toys. They're doing their bread box van. They're doing bread box. Easily, I'll pull that up, too, while you guys are talking. You could easily turn that into an A-team van. I think that's Oh, and you know what else you can do? There's that turtle van uh, that keeps going on sale. Uh, it's like 29 bucks. I saw somebody yeah. turn that into the A-team van. So, All right, hold on a second, guys. I got it. NECA made the main conjecture. So once again, sharing screen. It's on my personal Facebook, so you're about to see some shit. Don't judge. Don't judge me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that thing's awesome. I mean, theoretically, I got respect for Ace at Ramen Toy, but it's if stuff is brewing, it takes a long time to, to get around. But I'm already making some 18 customs in anticipation for this. But it's gonna it may be a while. So I, I have a couple buddies doing the same thing. But yeah. sometimes I have to go the cheap route. And I bought that turtle van on sale. I'll see if I ever get to it. <laughs> I can't even get a review out. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a couple things that are just sitting right now, and I need to put the hammer down. Yeah, there was a great what the pizza van, not from yeah, this mutant from mayhem the, movie. Yeah, 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 from the the mayhem mutant mayhem. Yeah, one. okay, yeah, all right. It's got a little bit more cartoony proportions to it, you know, to to match that funky animation style. But I've seen people dirty it up. With to use with the new Mezco turtles, I've seen people paint it black. I've seen people use it with the Joes. Yeah. So you can you can mask it up, and it it does a pretty good job. Hey, if, if you're creative, go for it, guys. I'm tired of people telling people not to play with their toys. Yeah. If you're creative, go for it. What's the worst thing you're going to do? Yeah, more <laughs> toys. Nice job, but you don't have to show us all. Spray paint it and gut it. There you go. Let's there see. You go. Where was it? Somebody just said, Russell, I can't agree to do a pre-order with ROM and it's two years for the racer. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I I haven't ordered anything from them. I took the gamble for the the CAG set, the um the cow Batman. replacement for the Batman, because I figured 30 bucks. We'll see what happens. But I, I typically don't do pre-orders to any 
small companies because you just never know like how many people have been bit because the company just couldn't float and went under Dude, and that money just well, went do you oh yeah it's funny you say that i'm sorry um the, the ramen racer is my first like i guess indie indie toy kind yeah. of uh free order um i don't know if you count is valorverse still an indie type of i thing? would say so they're not major yeah. league not to me i would put them still indie yeah. oh, okay i mean i i didn't pre-order their vehicle but i have pre-ordered from them before mm -hmm. um so I got some I got some horror stories. Um, one twelve garage. Those guys. I had to like I had to get my money back from them as soon as possible, and I did. But it's like I just it was just like one prototype after another, and you know I fell for it. I was able to get my money back. Figure Gear. I was able to get my money back from Figure Gear. He just couldn't keep up with the demands and the orders. It's like it's hard out there. And shout out to. Jason Bienvenu from Spiro Toys. Shout out to Skeletron. Shout out to people actually doing it. It's hard. It's tough doing this on an independent level. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's between that and the small indie toy stores like Dorkside. And uh, I think the, the latest one to go under was a company called Sure Thing Toys. Hmm. Oh, man, I like Sure Thing. I had ordered something from them, but it was in stock and it was on a, it was, it was the Mezco Superman. I got it for like less than a hundred bucks. And they shipped it to me and then I'd always get their things and I'd go look at their website and it'd be like, they'd have these sales, these crazy sales, but it would never, they'd never have new stock. And so I've just been looking at them for months going, all right, when are they just going to go under? And then somebody posted the other day going like, Hey, their website's gone. And sure enough, it's true. And, but uh, you mean, they're a good story. I just wanted to, to do this shout out cause they did write by me, by me and they did the right thing. I had, I had two pre-orders out for the Mezco turtles. One of the new hotnesses right now. Yeah. yeah. Things are beautiful. Oh man. And, put it back up. Put it back up. Oh, please. So great. I mean, it's just between all the heads and the articulation and how expressive their faces are. Like, I mean, that's, that's amazing. But uh, I had two pre-orders out. I had one at Entertainment Earth. And then I got impatient because people started getting them. And I said, oh, my God, these are amazing. <clears throat> and this company called One Stop Toy Shop, hey, Bobby, um, said, hey, we're getting our stock in. We have a couple slots left open. So I put in a pre-order charge. <laughs> then they kept saying, hey, we're shipping. Dorkside is dead. And that is exactly why I mentioned it. Yeah, yeah. That. Too soon. Too soon. Um, and I'll tell you what, those small companies like Dorkside, I mean, they did a lot of us, they did a lot of us right by getting us some figures during the pandemic. They got it out to people before others got them. Um, and nobody wakes up in the morning saying, let me screw all these customers over, no. you know? Yeah. So they just got in a bad situation. I mean, um, I have a few friends that are, are in that industry and I'm telling you for the small companies, you know, they can get really crapped on, especially with the one with the container crisis. It was brutal. Yeah. You just wish that there was more and maybe for legal reasons there couldn't be, but that there was more transparency or like, Hey, we really wish that we could refund everybody. But the fact is the money just doesn't exist anymore or, yeah. or whatever. But and it sucks. It's a gamble. It absolutely sucks. But just to to cap off this this store, one stop toy shop did right by me because I finally reached out and said, "Hey, you guys said that you were finishing all your shipments for for Ninja Turtles last week, and I never got a ship thing." And they said, "We're really sorry. We only got a third of what we pre ordered. Um, you can either wait and see if we got more, or we can cancel and refund your order." And I said, awesome. I was like, I can't have that sitting on my card just to wait. So please refund me. And they said, cool. They'll like, and for the inconvenience, we'll refund you 450 instead of 400. And then it turned into a thing of like, well, the credit card company is not going to let us do that much. So what's your PayPal? And then today, bing, I got my PayPal for the extra 50. Oh, wow. That's above and beyond. It's above yeah, and it's beyond. Great. They, they did they did absolutely right by me so i just i wanted to to give that shout out yeah i i always hear good things about can we go back to this one here yeah i nerd always hear good yeah. things about nerd nerd zoic so um, let me show you guys what i got can you solo me 
Uh, I can try to, sure. I don't know how to do that. Oh, there's uh, undergrads there and meeples. I yeah. So I got these both from Nerdzoic, the three zero MDL Deluxe. So I got Rodimus and I got Optimus. And once I save up my paper, I'll probably end up grabbing Starscream and Bumblebee from Nerdzoic too. They're super legit. Highly recommend it. These are going to be on the Black English YouTube. So yeah, very nice. If you yeah. want. Uh, if you want instant gratification, if you go to Little Tokyo where those the jungle stores are, you know which ones I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about, yeah. They they opened a three zero store. Okay, you're, you're trying to make me go bankrupt right now, Spec. So I gotta, <laughs> I'm gonna have to just ignore that you said that and just say like, up. Oh, looks like I'm just gonna have to wait for sales <laughs> online, and I not go to a three zero store where I spend. My social right. security I like these little shout outs. There's a lot of love for, for the small companies. Um, the Chosen Prime, I ordered from them before. They mm -hmm. were great. And this one right here, Terry Ruin. Do you yeah. guys ever follow the, the Island Viper? Yeah, I think he I goes he... to him. And not only was he a good mentor for me uh, to start YouTube, but dude, that is one of the most honest sellers out there. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised that he doesn't have. A, a bigger following, but that dude's legit, man. So shout yeah, out to you, Terry, if you're out there. Yeah, yeah Terry, I haven't luck. seen him post in a while. I used to see him participate quite a bunch. No, he's but... on his YouTube. He, he still posts on his YouTube all the time. Yeah, okay. But I mean, he was in like the G.I. Joe pages and stuff. That's a waste of time. The YouTube's where the action's at. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, all right, so let's... Uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next slide and see what yeah. else we got here. That was a big tangent. Back to Wonder Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, we could go all night, right? Um, Tra Travis is sitting in his chair doing stand and work right now, watching this on his phone, screaming, right. going, Get back to the my slides, you bastards. I'm going to attempt, or KJ, can you go back to whatever that our <laughs> last slide was? I'm not sure where we left off at. We were know. on the uh, O ring, so let me. We're talking about like all, all right, the so that was the last things. of that slide. I'll be right back, guys. Okay. So, guys, you're you're seeing me learn as I go here. So, do I remove this? I mean, we we can, so we can remove it. Hell, I can remove spec just to be, just be <laughs> cheeky. Don't worry, I'll I'll put him back. I'll put him back. We'll bring him back, guys. Yeah. Listen, uh, we'll bring him back. Let's there, uh, see. Let's, he's back. He, we'll there see he is. You bastards. Don't. Yeah, don't. Now you're trying to get rid off. of me at first chance. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, it's all love, buddy. Um, let me holler at the chat super, super quick because they're showing yeah, love yeah. to Alan Viper as well, saying he's prompt. Shout out to Russell. Um, but yeah, I'm bankrupt too, man. I'm waiting on payday so I can get me some more gridiron stuff. I love gridiron studios. <laughs> Shout out to all those dudes. Uh um, man, their vamp stuff. I it's dude, their loadouts are insane. Time to save up my money. Lots of love for Terry Ruin. Uh, Delta 17, shout out to Ken Poe at uh, Toy Connections. Delta Terry 17 Brown. is going to be the new fire from what I've, what I've been able to see. Is that a new, is Terry Brown a new viewer? Some guy, Hello Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> Who's this Bobby? Bobby Bexar? Is that how Bobby you Bobby Bexar? I think he's a Transformers fan. I mean, that's oh, like, okay. definitely a Cybertronian. That makes sense. Yeah. Tone Bexar, out. roll out. I tried. Yeah, yeah. I tried, Tony. You guys didn't like it. It was. It was no I, good. Hey, man. I told you. Like you should. You gotta get like the details in, like the lettering on the lens and all that stuff. Like make it fun. You know? More. Time. Yeah, we we got uh, Tony's figs is an upcoming um, customizer. Yes. Yeah, he uh, likes doing rainbow bright customs. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so you, you follow him too. Yeah. 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 He's he's yeah, currently working on like a sunshine bear. Dude, his uh, My Little Pony stuff is unbelievable. Yeah. The bronies. The bronies love Tony's figs. Bronies figs. I heard I heard he has a tattoo on the side of his ass to denote Tony's figs. He's, he's his own little <laughs> pony. Tony pony. I mean, that's where mine is. Uh, hey, weren't we all supposed to get it there? <laughs> Right. My invitation got lost in the mail. <laughs> All right, next slide. Next slide, KJ. Okay. Um, I I think we're out. I, I don't know how to 
get the other slides. What's all right? What's, I'm gonna figure that out right now, and we'll see. I, I'm sure that um, Travis is going. Sad. Come on, man. <laughs> but uh, all right, I don't know if we're supposed to be going into this yet because I think I want to save. Listen, guys, I'm known yet. for my GI Joe fandom. Okay, so. <clears throat> We're going to wait a little bit on that and get into some other stuff. So we got a, this okay, is a is. friend of Rob Leafield, I think. Um, Lifefield, I'm not really sure. So this yeah, guy Lyfield. usually is into the Quentin Tarantino feet stuff, but this is Todd McFarlane. He's there a new, new guy on the scene. He somehow got the DC license. Uh, what do you guys think of some of these figures? I have not bought anything McFarlane in years, except for the Batmobile. Um, I don't really, it doesn't scale with what I want it to. I don't like his, <clears throat> we all know reuse and repaint is part of the game. I don't like a lot of his reuse because he gets sloppy and a lot of it's just to get product out quick and and to the masses which I, I get and respect but the the care for the characters doesn't seem to be there a lot of the time that said i mean like this classic joker or uh, penguin yeah looks great and then there's, there's the platinum version that has the uh the kenner colors which looks awesome and then you've got this captain boomerang with soft goods and it's just like and, and you're right this is what pisses me <laughs> off about mcfarlane is that um, it's like that, that ex-girlfriend you just keep going back to because it's so good, even when it's bad, <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, look at this Starfire, look at Penguin, look at Boomerang, and then we're going to get some other crap that follows behind it. So it's like <laughs> that, you, you know what I mean? It's like that bipolar personality. You get, yeah. you get good days and you get bad days. When they when they take their time and they put the money and the effort into it, they put out some great stuff. Oh, absolutely! But they sling a lot of shit mm -hmm. to allow themselves to do that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, this guy Tony's Figgas. Tony's Figgas. Tony's five Figgas. He's a fruit. He's a fruit Tony's farmer, right? Five. Classic yeah, penguin looks great. I agree with you, Tony's figs. Digital. Oh my goodness. I can't believe those digital NFT figs, whatever. Yeah, whoever falls for that. Um, listen, I'm sure there's gonna be a market for some of that NFT stuff in like 20 years or something. Not now. Don't waste your money on that shit. Yeah. It's ridiculous. All right, so um See, I don't know how you're going back, but then I can. I'm hitting shift. So, so hit shift, hit shift eight. Okay. Shift eight. All right. I'll try that next. All right. So we got Starfire. And then I think I, in the comic books, I'm not sure what version of this. Is this her sister? or is it I, I have no idea. All right. Does somebody in the in the chat know who this figure in black is? And it's okay if you don't, because I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. And we're, then... we're pissing off Tony right now, but don't be <laughs> mad at us, Tony. I re I'm a Marvel guy. I'm reading Marvel and Skybound, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, the platinum versions are usually just repaints, not different characters. So it's got to be a version of her. Okay. Yeah, that's so we're her. getting... Um... Chase Ver Veruian. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll go with that. <clears throat> I mean, still pretty. I mean, the Starfire does look cool. That's a good uh, head sculpt. Um, so, for people that collect McFarlane, I think this is a, a welcome figure here. Yeah, but it just it kills. It's a thirty dollar figure. It is a thirty dollar figure. It's a twenty dollar um, figure with a ten dollar card stand. Yeah, that's the yeah. It doesn't come with hands <laughs> or heads or you know. No, and I think she would be the perfect figure <clears throat> to do like a glow effect with. Uh, those black light yeah. series. Some of those I, are actually pretty cool. I, I'm some not of them are cool, but you have to wait for what, like 
he waits for like the third or fourth release to do something like that. Yeah. I mean, come out with a bang. And then the penguin. This is a beauty piece. I like this uh the light blue one. Yeah. This is that really cool. That else. kind of is a, a Yeah, that's a throwback. I, I think is it to uh the superpowers? Yeah, the Kenner, yeah. the superpowers, the Kenner figure. Yeah. The old cartoon. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, it's their author <laughs> ego loose lipped. <laughs> this is an adult collector show. We're an adult collector show. Yeah, we're guys that play with toys, so bring out loose lips. And then we got Boomer Wang, uh, Boomerang, Boomerang. <laughs> um, yeah, I like the soft goods, it just shows that they can do it. I mean, mm. it should be adopted throughout the Batman. Uh, when they do the Batman figures with the capes. Yeah. Hush. Soft goods, but you can see that they can do it. I'm Hush, actually the soft sorry. goods would be amazing. Oh, go I ahead. was just looking at this going, is that the same trench coat from the Bane movie figure that they did? I know the Let's trench coat look. was brown, but is it like the same cutout outline? Let's take yeah, a look. Possible. Let's take a look. I mean, I like the scarf. The scarf is so nice. So very, very nice. Keep him warm on those chilly yeah. days. All right. So hold on a second, gents. Let me go ahead <laughs> and once again, adventures in toy streaming. Let's see if I can share Bane's trench coat. Oh, nope. It's different. Unless it's the same, but fur lined. Yeah. I mean, Bane's got, the pimp, he's got the pimp daddy jacket on. I mean, I love that. I think that would be a good jacket to throw on Destro, maybe Mindbender. Um, but yeah, that that's a really cool, like soft goods, right? Yeah. And they can do something like that. So almost all the caped figures should have some type of soft goods. I'm just saying, like Hush with soft goods would be incredible. Gordon, Harvey Bullock. You name it. There's a lot that you can do with that. A yep. lot of great characters that could get soft goods out of McFarlane, I think. I mean, I've accepted that I'm a, a grown man that plays with toys. I can accept that they have clothes that can come on and off, just like a Barbie. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. If you talk to the OGs in the industry, uh, people will still refer to these as action dolls. That was a term used in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, when it was Hasbro that created the whole action figure. Right. They, that's their term. They they made that up. Because boys yeah. are insecure. You know, we didn't want to play with dolls, so we had to call them figures. I had two older sisters, so it didn't matter to me. Their beards are longer, though. Um, let's see here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think we're done with... McFarlane, so I okay. think I'm going to remove this one. See if I do this right. Okay. Cool. And we then... can wash our mouths out of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go on to. We were talking about indie toy companies, right? Let's look at one of the original indie films. That's this little known epic. Ooh called Star Wars. So that's never heard of it. a lot it's of people gonna, don't realize that a new hope was uh, an independent film. Did you guys know that? I did not know that. A new uh, hope or when it was Star Wars before they dubbed it a new hope. It was an independent film that George Lucas got Fox to back. And then they backed the, the, um, the sequels. Now, well, they, oh God, <clears throat> this is putting me on the spot. If memory serves, yeah, Fox paid for the first one. So and so because of that, I don't know if it's considered an indie or not. But well, the other ones totally are. That's all Lucas. Lucas for. paid out of pocket for Empire and Jedi, and Fox agreed to distribute them. Yeah. So is this because we brought up this independent film? Tony's out. 
I think so. Yeah. Tony's not a Star Wars guy, but I sure as hell am. And I just want to really quick, I want to give a shout out to May the 4th, which was, uh, we'll we'll commemorate the 25th anniversary of uh, Star Wars episode one. And there is flat out a marathon that will happen that has all nine movies at once. It is going to be insane. And in fact, the runtime will be two hours in 41 minutes 22 hours 22 hours 22 hours and 41 minutes yeah yeah i, I would have to do a lot of chores uh, as much as i for love my it. mom to let me out that long <laughs> as much as i love star wars i cannot put my ass in the seat for that long and no, yeah. for as great as a theater as the el capitan is it ain't that comfortable for that long like it is not. those are old seats they're not will, like new yeah. cush luxury <laughs> That will be painful. Like, definitely go to your dine-in theaters wherever local listings are, folks. Um, sorry about that. I just wanted or, to... or this or this option here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get some popcorn. Make some DiGiorno's. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno's. Take uh, your key yeah. bakes whenever you want. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I, I I apologize for that. Uh, but that's all right. So, um, this is uh, better than. Ezra, uh, this looks pretty cool. <laughs> Not too bad. Uh, I, I can't tell. Is this three? This yeah, is three. This is vintage uh, yeah. collection. Okay. And this is how great the 118 collection is. So I have these. And uh, the soft goods and the face sculpts on these are fantastic. So, yeah. So Wait, shout out to oh. Chester Guru. He loves TVC. Save TVC. Fight for TVC. Chaz loves uh, the TVC collection, and they're great. Even at 116, soft goods, the face sculpts, they'll go on ridiculous sales where Roscon or even on Walmart or Amazon, you can get them really cheap if you know when and where to look. So, But anyway, Ahsoka, which is really Rebels, but whatever. Which is, which is fine if that's how they're going to – continue with the franchise and make their fans happy keep it going yep ahsoka <laughs> rebels i don't know this dude <laughs> he looks pretty and cool though Janice Jar- jarvis if you watch rebels rebels was a good show if you never watched it like at the beginning it's cheesy and then it gets good so i i recommend rebels yeah it's like any of the you know when i remember when it first came out and everybody's like ah it's another show aimed at kids like i don't want it and and yeah, it when it first started, it was aimed at a slightly younger crowd, and then boom, like that, it got very mature very quick. I, I like this here. Um, I fell asleep in the middle of Attack of the Clones. You know what? I wonder what George Lucas was thinking when he said, "You know what kids will really like is trade routes." Let's talk about <laughs> trade routes. <laughs> So, yeah, I think a lot of people fell asleep in that. And then they brought it back for, uh, I guess it was episode three. They kind of really, really upped the story and made it interesting again. Yeah. But, I mean, kids love to learn about trade routes and spice and all that. Taxations, stuff. tariffs, you, you name it. Yeah, old guys, diplomats. All right. And then I do like this figure. Um, I don't know how to say his name. But there is Zeb Aurelius or Zeb, Zeb or Aurelius. Sure. But what I like about this dude is he is the original concept art for Chewbacca. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they brought him into the story, which I thought was brilliant. I just, yeah. I like when they do that kind of stuff. Yeah. When they and really kind great... of honor the, the legacy of the franchise. Mm-hmm. He's a great character, too. They brought him back in the live action shows. Like, there's a lot of the love is deep. Um, yeah, yeah. Was it Mando? It was a little. Yeah, in Mando, Mando, and maybe an episode of Book of Boba Fett as well. Or maybe, yeah, that, it was one of that's the two. Where my, the, yeah, that's where my nerdiness comes out. Now, uh, something that you guys may not know about me is I have a massive, <laughs> massive Star Wars collection. Okay, but it stopped after uh, Revenge of the Sith. Okay. So every now and then I'll pick up a piece. But when I was watching that and, and he made his appearance in Mando, I'm hitting my son. I'm smacking him on the arm. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's Chewbacca. And he's like, dad, 
That's not Chewbacca. <laughs> I like gotta get that uh, oh. Star Wars nerd back in the day. The art books are incredible. There's a Ralph McQuarrie art book that's pretty dedicated, and I need to get my hands on that. Like the concept art. There's one for the storyboards. It's the love is deep. It really is. Yeah, about 25 years ago, 25 years ago, Lucasfilm opened up the archives, and they did a traveling exhibit called. Oh my God, my brain just blanked. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I have a poster for it somewhere, but the, <laughs> it, it came to the Smithsonian, which is, I was kind of from that area. I went to high school in that area and, but I was at college in North Carolina and my best friend still lived in the area and I blew off all my classes for that Friday and drove straight up to DC. And then me and my buddy went to that exhibit and They've broken it up. Like I know the science centers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but nothing like that exhibit had, they had the art, yeah. they had the storyboards, they had Macquarie's art. And to be able to look at these storyboards and these map paintings up close and personal and see the line art and the ink and the brush strokes, the texture, like there's just something it was amazing yeah it's Absolutely intangible amazing. To, yeah. To connect to it, like that. yeah it doesn't even translate and and they have these art books and i have a ton of the books yeah mm -hmm. are amazing but it's it just doesn't translate to if you ever get to see them in person yeah all right i listen there's a lot of love for star wars but i just saw uh, we lost like three people. That happens so, like, all the time on our show we lose people <laughs> all the time if we really want to lose people we can start talking about wrestling but I don't yeah. really know a whole lot about it. So, yeah, yeah. All right. So, it's gonna be awesome, here's, you guys. Anyway, here's Momal Nadon. I kind of remember him. I mean, we all used to call him Hammerhead when we were kids, right? This is Hammerhead. That's the Hammerhead. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, very cool looking. It looks like the detail is good. This looks like a bigger figure. Is this a six incher? Yeah, this is Black Series. So, this is, this the is six Black inch. Series. And he's a slightly taller figure. I have. So, this is a repaint, retool. Of, of the Galaxy's the, Edge, Doc Ondar, right? The Doc Ondar. And I yeah. have I have the Doc Ondar. It, to me, was worth the slightly more than deluxe price because of all the stuff it came with. Yeah, it came with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. The soft goods, all the accessories and, and antiquities that he came with. Yeah, um, but this, this, is is a, this is a great figure. I understand why cool. they made it a deluxe. I get it because of the, the overlays and the paint apps and the whatever. He but for really his, cool yeah, but for as awesome as he looks, he is not worth deluxe pricing for me. Like it, it just he comes with three cups, which I think came with the bar set, the <laughs> PulseCon bar set, yeah, and a stormtrooper blaster, and then it's just the figure. So uh, he'll yeah, go. What ends up happening is there's a uh, part of the interruption. The the Star Wars collector they just inhale everything. I had to stop myself from buying Funko Pops. They were on sale on Amazon today. I had to stop myself from buying figs. Um, there's people who will pay that deluxe price, but yep. just if you wait, it'll calm down. It'll be $24.99 later. It'll be $19.99 later. So it's just with time. People are buying the Death Watch Mandos and the Night Owls for like 10 bucks. I mean, that's just the way it goes. So you just wait along, and then the price will go down to where it fits yeah. your budget, if you still give a shit by that point. Well, for as much as I love Star, and I've said this before, like Star Wars was my first love as a toy as a kid, <laughs> and and oddly enough, it was also the first toy line I gave up because of GI Joe and Transformers and everything. And then it was kind of Star Wars and and GI Joe that got me back into collecting over COVID. And then just with the way that Hasbro and Lucasfilm is probably choking Hasbro and the, the way that they're dealing with the properties, I, I'm losing interest and I've very much slowed down on star Wars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, everybody out there, it looks like there's about 43 people watching. Um, a toy kind of mood is really growing as a channel even if they have poor judgment and add me as the host. <laughs> so do me a favor, hit the like button for them. It looks like uh, if I'm looking at it right, there's only about five likes and we got, you know, almost 50 people in here. So no, if you guys you refresh like it, button, like, yeah. I think that would be really cool. It'll 
make Travis think that he made a good choice in asking me to jump in here tonight. No, no, we're doing good. We're doing good. We got about 27 likes. That's okay. that's fine. 28. Look at that. Yeah. All right. I, I'm looking at uh, uh, my MySpace account. So <laughs> it's probably not updated because it's connected to dial-up. I'm um, on my Prodigy, I'm pro, a pro, uh, Prodigy Internet account right now. I'm okay, using my cool. Netscape browser right now for this. So. so I think this is the most exciting thing. I've already spoiled it by clicking on it a couple times. Uh, this is the <laughs> most exciting thing to come out for Star Wars. Uh, there is so much interest. This is a little known character. Um, it's a deep cut. It, I think he's truly, we're going to find out maybe in episode 14 that he's truly the the um, <laughs> so what do you guys think of this i think one um i'm pretty sure this is a joke that no i, I mean it was day. april fool's day so so is they'll it buy, real they'll buy it all and, and let me just say i remember um i had joined a fraternity in college and i left because my nickname in the fraternity was going to be jar jar binks because this is like <laughs> the odds right i'm like Forget you. I'm not. I'm not gonna get laid if my pledge name is gonna be Jar Jar Binks. I'm just out. So what do you? Yo, that could have been the best name. Girls think you have a tongue like that? Come on, man. <laughs> that but, could but have been seriously, the best um, thing for you. Yeah, but um, 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 Ahmad Best got so much hate. Look, I won't. I'll say the dark side of it, but he was able to really bounce back, and they showed him a lot of love. They made him a Jedi. Um, in um, one of the uh, like Star Wars game shows for kids, yep. and then they made it canon in Mando season three, and he was awesome. So I need yep. that figure. We got plenty of Jar Jar figures. I troop built this figure to have Gungans versus droids in my episode one dial. So uh, I'm good on these. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So yeah, I mean, mark my words. Uh, if they do the storytelling right, we're gonna find out he was behind. Sidious and everything. So yeah, yeah. you guys just stay tuned for that. All right. If you have soft goods, you can make a Sif Jar Jar. <laughs> all right. So let me see what our uh what our next thing here is. Guys, just give me a second. I just learned this today. <laughs> no, you're doing um, great, man. And let me know if I need to like pull back i know i can no i, I kind of want to touch on this one since we were talking about you, you know what no i'm not going to do that one yet we're going to okay. do this there's this other up and coming comic book company um marvell mm -hmm. right are you guys familiar with the iron man i mean i know there's zines like sometimes you go to indie cons there'll be zines of iron man i think a long time ago roger corman made an iron man film it was kind of underseen Robert Downey Jr. going to Paltrow. I mean, I think you can only get bootleg DVDs of it these yeah. days. Yep. But, um, what do you guys think? Do guys in the chat, do you guys collect the Marvel Legends? I mean, what I see here is a lot of future peg warmers. Um, yep. Man. I do like I do like when they do the classic Iron Man. Um I, I am going to say I do like that She-Hulk. She looks like she comes right out of the comic book. I got that She-Hulk, yeah. The She-Hulk, um, I think, is the winner of that wave. I got the movie Deadpool because I didn't, I never got the, I didn't want to get that two-pack when, yeah. when it came out. And I'm sure if they release, and they will, a new one from the new movie, maybe I'll cancel this one while I'll get that. I don't know. Um, but it, I think it'd be fun to have a movie Deadpool for photos. But, uh, I, for what, <laughs> for, for what little I started dabbing my foot into the Marvel pool. I'm going to change that to neighbors. I'm going to change <laughs> guys to neighbors. Hey, War Chest. Um, I have, I have now pulled my foot out of the Marvel pool. I should never have dipped my foot in in the first place. And I have definitely said no more. Like, I just can't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got love for Marvel Legends. Like Black Series is really the one that got me back into collecting. I couldn't say no to that Sith Jet Trooper, um, the uh, Comic Con exclusive. And then and then and then and then, um, much love to uh, the you know 
MCU and everything else. But with these, uh, yeah, man, I think the diehards, they can go for it. They can keep the line alive. I'm strictly Ross Khan at this point. I go to that Ross. I go to that Aldi's. If Aldi's was in LA, I would go to Aldi's. I go to Five Below, Burlington, TJ Maxx, Marshalls. There's plenty of discount figs, overstock all over the place. And that's how I stay in Marvel Legends. So I know. And you know, it's funny you say that um, Marvel will really never be too affected by those discount chains because of the backing that they have. Um, I yeah. mean, I know it's a license fee for Hasbro, but it's always going to, you're always going to get Marvel Legends. It, it's always going to happen. So you may have some waves that are a little bit harder to get. I feel like um, I think that new X-Men 97 wave yeah. is mm -hmm. kind of hit or miss, right? You can't really mm -hmm. seem to find uh, Goblin Queen's a hard one to get, Madeline. Yeah, and plus the, uh, the production is going to be different than it was back in the heyday of the pandemic and COVID collecting because they sort of up the numbers and then that's where Roscon came from. So a lot of stuff is shrinking back. If you want it, pre-order it. Cause if you play Clarence chicken, you may be missing out. Blob is a hundred bucks right now. A lot of stuff is going up because people wanted to wait for it to hit the shelves. And some of this stuff's not making the shelves. Yeah. It, and that's a great point to make. Um, I did joke that those would be uh peg warmers, but um, what do you got there? Saber tooth. This is, is that from 97? That's the two-pack. No, this is the new two-pack that just came out. This is probably oh, nice. one of my last Marvel Legend per purchases. Yeah. But but I wanted this saber tooth. Um, As a hostage pack. You had to buy the two-pack in order to get that saber tooth. Yeah. And I mean, I don't mind getting a, a street clothed Logan. I'd been looking at the Mezco one, but I didn't want to pull the trigger on it. And uh, so, you know, but I do have the, the steel box Mezco Wolverine that he can go with but you know he's he's just a big hulking piece of plastic and he's a really well done figure yeah extremely and I, well done. i know with the pegs and everything he's a re-release or a retool but and guys that, that's that's marketing 101 i mean to do these two packs or these yeah. three packs it it's listen it pisses off some fans some collectors but when you look at it from the business side it, it's smart right you, you release that saber tooth, you throw in Wolverine, urban cowboy Wolverine, and um, you, you, you got something. You know, people want the deep cut Logan there, but uh, it's saber tooth. That's who you're going after. Yeah. All right. But it's it's nice for what the two pack costs because, you know, if this saber tooth was a single release, he'd be a $35 figure. So, you know, to get this style Wolverine, if you didn't already have one, which I did not, it, it was a nice bonus. Yeah, so. can you uh, can you turn him around and put his backside right up to the camera there? <laughs> I mean, look at that, guys. What's what's the song from Urban Cowboy? You know what? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> no, it's uh, a little George Michael. Yeah, a video. lot of people would say, uh, "Well, I guess it would be nice happened. if I could touch your Logan." I know not everybody's got a Logan like you. Anyway. But I'm telling you, that is America's ass right there. Boom. Well, it'd be Canada's ass. Yeah, yeah. it would be uh, some maple syrup loving ass. Um, so here's a little bit more of a close-up here. Uh, somebody said earlier that this uh, Iron Man is more of a Mega Man. Mega Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, it does feel like he comes right out of the, the Capcom game. <laughs> Right, <laughs> yeah. I think he's cool looking. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys I, think of this Iron Man? I can't wait to get it on sale. Is is that <laughs> suit from like the mid nineties era? I think it's from the UPN, the UPN Kids Show, basically. Okay, That's I just where I think a lot of these looks are from. It's from the UPN show. Ah, there, there was that whole thing when Iron Image, Man when oh, Image Comics like, came out and Todd McFarlane and all that. That was like that conical boot was sort of a style that was popular it was like the, it was the boot and then it was having the the wings off the the, the antenna wings or whatever off the right, sides so of we're, we're talking mid to late 90s right because early yeah. 90s everybody had a trench coat on 
Yeah. Right. And then we got, uh, I don't know what version. That's not version one Iron Man, but the gold version Iron Man. That's very, like, it seems, is it Kirby? Would it be a Jack Kirby Iron Man? Uh, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's, it's 60s Iron Man. Yeah, it's, um. here, let me just pull up the Iron Man wiki. So, hold on a second. So, according to the Iron Man wiki, if I can get wicked with it, wiki wiki, Wicka, wick. So the golden armor uh model one version three was the second version of the first Iron Man armor. Uh after Tony Stark refined it back at Stark Industries, modified from the original version, features a golden appearance, slightly new designs, blah 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 blah. First appearance tells the suspense. Da 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 mark three modified version, superhuman Weird. strength. So fields, it's the third version blah, 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 of the blah, second blah. version. So yeah, it's canon. <laughs> it's a version of the version with the version. Yeah. All right, great. All right, let's see. Who else is in that way? We got a guy I've never seen before. Who do we lose? Before. How many people do we lose from that? Uh, I don't know. Guys, right, we're talking about five already. minutes, and I'm going to have to do my, my usual room switch. Uh-oh. All right. Well, we got a, a guy in purple with green hair. I don't know that guy. <laughs> that oh. that was the. Uh, why is my brain just mush? Because anyway, your brain they, is like my brain. We, at was, a certain it, age, it just gets mush. Now and, listen, I, I did read comics in the nineties. Is it Doc Samson? Yes, cut his hair off. Uh, real quick, we got a super chat from Mister Andrew. Whoa. Zippel. Thank you so much again, Andrew. You are you are a mensch. Man, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> basically, uh, Ghostbusters O rings are dope. They didn't spend enough time on GI Joe and WonderCon. Um, Star Wars is not an indie movie, but all the other Lucas films are. Um, there's a 22 hour marathon of all of the other movies. Um, there's a double decker. Uh, Vamp Guard, uh, that is a Baldy Locks exclusive, but you can save 50 bucks if you use uh, Zin oh, Zalabim man. as the code. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just good times. Thank you so much for the super chat, man. Thanks for showing us some love, for real. Mickey Rourke. That's who the purple awesome. guy is. The purple guy is Mickey Rourke. Whip yes. That was so weird that Whiplash was the Crimson oh, Dynamo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Whip That's got... what I'm going to call him. And then over to the right, we've got uh, what a lot of G.I. Joe. This is what's interesting about G.I. Joe uh, collectors is G.I. Joe classified <laughs> collectors. They see other characters with the Marvel Legends stuff. Somebody mentioned it in the chat earlier, but um, I see uh, Crystal Ball with this. Okay. You know, um, but I don't know this character. Uh, I'm sure somebody can jump in and say who that is. Um, Crystal Ball wannabe, according to Airborne Customs, is Count Nefaria. Okay, I hear Nefaria, and I think Nefario from the the Minions, the the Gru movies. Damn it, Travis! I'm sorry, I didn't realize all these slides were here, dude. <laughs> these are awesome. All right, this makes the gold armor Iron Man so much better, man. And uh, we get porno 1970s porno mustache Stark. Yep. So, if you guys are doing a a seventies porn boogie nights diorama, here's a head right here that right. almost looks like Burt Reynolds. Um, just... And if you lift up the skirt, it's got matching sideburns. Right, right, right. <laughs> you even comes with a uh, one twelve bottle water, so you can rinse off afterwards. <laughs> Trav, I'm sorry, I messed up. I didn't realize these these were in here. And then we've got. Uh, our Capcom versus Marvel Iron Man. Yeah. Looks like it's model 09. Uh, Jada Toys yeah. is doing a better job. I don't Dude, know. That's kind of cool. Whoa, looking. He's kind of splayed out in that photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants to let that. you know what he's working with. He's showing his junk. Um, 
I don't know. That looks pretty cool. That would fit right in with the Jada toys. It kind of would. It it would, wouldn't it? That's what is it? Marvel versus Capcom. So there you yeah. go. And then we've got our standard model 20 Iron Man. I think this is, you know, I'm not deep cut into uh Iron Man or fully invested, but this is kind of cool looking. Yeah. If you had that uh Shop Disney Toy Box Hall of Armor, there was a point where it was like 15, 20 bucks. You can use that for your um Stark Industries Iron Man Hall of Armor, basically. And it works, it works with the Marvel Legends as well. Um, so but even SH Figure Arts has some crazy expensive hulls of armor. There's third party toy box hall of armor from Z Bob Toys or something like that. So there's some good stuff. I like this. Travis is telling me that's what the notes were for. I actually did read the notes and I went through this, but when you're on camera and you know, I keep moving my hands up like Ricky Bobby and Tower Dig and Nice. <laughs> now, so I don't know what I'm doing here. So <laughs> I didn't realize I could click through all this stuff. This is awesome. Uh, Trav, you did one hell of a job. I'm sorry, I screwed up. And then we got the superhero pose here, right? This like is, it. you know, uh, Robert Downey made this famous and then it was emulated all the way throughout all the movies. And then it was made fun of in the Black Widow movie, right? When, uh, yeah, even a Florence is Pugh made fun of it and i am way too attracted to florence Pugh for being a black man but anyway um, all right so and here's the she hulk that i said i liked yeah, yeah. she's this the one, one of the that I, few minutes ago i said it so <laughs> yeah i love the this bit awesome. so guys yeah. uh i don't know if i'm gonna piss people off here but deadpool is based on she hulk yeah, I know. You're, you're cranking your head. Everybody thinks I'm nuts. No, she is technically the first person to break the third wall and oh, always yeah. talk to the reader. Okay? Deadpool gets all all the love for it, the originality for it. Nah, it was She-Hulk, guys. Accept it. It was a tall, Amazon green-haired woman. That got it. And, you know, some of those were very funny back in the day, and I think ahead of its time. Um, I I don't think they nailed the formula in the She-Hulk show. The She-Hulk show had a lot of funny jokes, like when they they did the, the flashback to uh, her getting the infusion, and yeah. it was based on the 70s. Mm. Um, the show. Yeah. The show. That was amazing. The intro, yeah. So they had a lot of great moments. They also had a lot of terrible moments. But she is the first character to kind of break that that third. What is it? The third wall. Yeah, third. Uh, wall. Yeah, the breaking the fourth wall. Fourth and wall. Uh, wall. wore just the same Plastic Man. Grant Morrison did something similar with Animal Man. Okay, so um, maybe she wasn't the first one, but she was. That, that was, was a moment. running thing in her in her comic book. Yeah. Like she would actually talk to John Byrne. Like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. All right, cool. All right, so let's uh, let's see what else Trav put in here for us. Um, it's a great figure. I love what the diaphragm joint lets you do, even without the waist swivel, which you don't really need at that point. That waist cut could be brutal with a figure like this. The diaphragm joint makes a lot of sense and it gives you a lot of same poisability. Kind of does what McFarlane is doing with his seven inch figures. Um, I prefer the diaphragm joint to the ab crunch. And whenever I can get it out of any of these figures, I'm grabbing that figure. Yeah. And um, I really do think that this really screams 90s She Hulk. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. I think they did a nice job with this one. And then here we go with Whiplash. And you're right, Trav. If I had followed the notes, I would have known that this was Whiplash. Terrible. But then it wouldn't be as fun. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Take um, Travis's notes, rip them in half, <laughs> do your own thing. Yeah, he does a hell of a job, man. Yeah. I don't think he gets enough props. I know. I know, KJ, but he does a hell of a job. His notes were phenomenal. I'm just, I got stage fright. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got uh, Count. Nefaria. Count Crystal Ball. 
Count Crystal Ball with the Crystal Bulge. Um, and then we got, I don't know, these are some pretty cool product shots here. Would you pay $24.99 for those product shots? I would not. I might pay $24.99 for that head sculpt, though, because mm -hmm. a lot of people buy head sculpts on Etsy, on eBay, and they pay $24.99. 35 that's, bucks. That's what I need to do. I need to start charging that much for Hasbro and not even say they're Hasbro head sculpts. Just be like KJ's customs. I'd be selling like go. classified head sculpts. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, $29.99. That's Falcon from Classified. No, it's not. It's Tom Berger from Platoon. And it's there you a go. custom. See, look, I like I like that you're you're coming up with the business plan. Mm -hmm. And then we got these uh She Hulk, no, Deadpool figures here. And uh, we already kind of went over. No, we went over Cowboy, Urban Cowboy, Logan. So is, is this a re-release of Wolverine? Yeah, it's, it's like a hybrid. It's like uh, it's kind of an heads. updated one, right? It's it's you get two yeah. hits. So they did one with uh, Logan and Xavier, and then they did some other ones. That was the blue jeans one with the claws. So they combined the two heads, and then they <laughs> did that Deadpool as a separate release, and without uh, Negasonic. Teenage Warhead. Yeah. All right. And then what does Deadpool come with there? Is that a unicorn? Yeah. That's his, little stuff. Uh, his that masturbating unicorn. unicorn. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and that, they really I, did. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, please. I was just going to say they really did kind of kill that um, Hugh Jackman screaming sculpt there. That's pretty cool looking. Dude, I remember when X2 came out. And they did the scene where Wolverine's protecting the X Mansion with the, with the, uh, against the troops. It was so live. I shit you not. I saw X Two five times that weekend. X Two was probably one of my favorite sequels yeah. of a movie. They it was yeah. so well done and the setup for Phoenix and then they crash and burned with the the third one. But I um, just I pretend the third one doesn't even exist. I just. Go from X2 to Days of Future's Past, basically. But they cleaned it up with Days of Future Past. That was amazing. Yeah. I may just go watch Days of Future Past after this. Or just watch I, X2 and Days of Future Past at the same time. Yeah, unrelated, because I, I have ADHD. I just might go watch Days of uh, Days of Thunder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deep cut. I All love right. That so this guy looks heavy into Space Ghost. And Doctor Strange, maybe he needs some gummies. That's so he's talking about the Count Nefaria. Sorry, I thought was... he was talking about me because <laughs> I actually I could use some gummies. <laughs> gummies would be fantastic. And shout out to Dave Story who gave me some tremendous gummies when a friend of ours was visiting, and uh, that was a fun night. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's awesome. Where is All the... right, and we got some more of the loadout here. Um, I might buy Deadpool just for the unicorn. I'm a huge fan of unicorns. All right. It's not as bad as uh, in Dodgeball when he goes back to the chick's house and there's unicorns everywhere. <laughs> but, I do, but I do like unicorns. And then we got, uh, it looks like Logan just got into like a dance-off pose. Like, all right, what, what do you got? Looks yeah. pretty good. You got slayed. No, never mind. Yeah. My only complaint with the Deadpool is I wish it had one or two more heads with more expressive eyes. And I know that the the SH Figure Arts character has like the poppable eye plates. Hey, somebody was saying that S SHF Deadpool two was thirty bucks. Like where I was looking, yeah, where? I did, I if did it's not 30 bucks, I'll buy it. I don't tell these guys anything because they don't tell me shit. But tell me so I can tell everyone else. I put shit. stuff in the chat today. No, nope. nope. Don't I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You did, you did, you did. You helped me out. Because that I'm troop building not the shadow tracker, but I'm gonna troop build that wolf spider. So that wolf spider is gonna be like my night force troop build. So oh. uh a lot of picks that Trav put in here. Uh these are yeah, he went funny. in. There's Canada's ass again. That's uh that's great. I mean, you could tell that he works out. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> on that note, I'll switch and move whoever took these product shots really did a funny, nice job. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a little bit better. They don't give as much 
uh, love and detail to the G.I. Joe line because there's so many mess ups with the G.I. Joe classified stuff. But um, yeah, it's uh, th these are these are killing it. It's awesome. But yeah, hit that like button, guys. Um, it, it's amazing that Travis accidentally texted me and, and asked me to jump in here. Uh, but I'm glad I was free to to kind of help out. Tonight. Listen, so, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. You're doing you're doing a better job than I would have done because I wouldn't been like, yeah, you guys know this feel, like and subscribe, blah blah blah. Here's some toys. All right, bye. Like this would have been a 20 minute episode if I was hosting right now. <laughs> So you're well, doing let, great. And thanks for rocking thanks, with us, for real. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I, I like that uh, I've been invited back a couple times. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, all right. So I, I, I think we lost Dave for... No, uh, I, I, I'll i bring him back once he gets back in. I'll add him yeah, back. Yeah, when, he, when he's back in. Um, so let me get out of this. I think I'm kind of getting the hang of this. Uh, okay. we'll, we'll get this out of here, and we'll go to the next presentation. Um it's okay to jump in this without without spec, right? Oh, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. All right, I'm your here, timing man. is great because I feel like this is right up your alley, you and KJ. So, um, are you guys Sweet. familiar with the Transformers? Oh, I hate Transformers. What? Blasphemy. <laughs> Look, I I just I found this guy on the peg yesterday. The the? Uh, the Bumblebee concept art. Uh, Sunstreaker. Sunstreaker, yeah. And I normally don't mess with the movie figures, but he looks super cool, and I love his alt mode. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the, the Cybertronian ones movie. are really Star. fun. Yeah. So he was a good pickup. Um, yeah, I'm super excited for Swoop. They're finally finishing the Dinobots. Uh, he looks fantastic. Yeah. And he goes up for pre-order tomorrow. Yeah, so everyone be ready. A lot of the Joes that we'll talk about later are going up for pre-order tomorrow, April 4th. So is that swoop. So, you know, may the winds of fortune be ever at your side or whatever the hell they say. All right, so this is uh, swoop, swoop, there it is. Swoop, there it is. Shaka, laka, shaka, laka. He is cool looking. I just can't, I can't go down the rabbit hole of going back into Transformers. I had a oh, lot of Transformers as a kid. I, I still have a few of them left, but it's kind of like, listen, I know there's a lot of wrestling love out there, but I treat Transformers like I treat my love of wrestling. I love Transformers from Generation 1 and WWF. Okay. All right. So, like, I don't know much beyond that. We have a very huge wrestling presence here in the next couple days in the Philadelphia area. We've yeah. got, uh, I think it's WrestleMania. Yes. Yeah, WrestleMania. It's 40. WrestleMania. It's I have friends. I have coworkers that have taken off in the next few days. Mm -hmm. They are going to be over at, um, it, I think it's at Wells Fargo and Lincoln yeah. financial field where the Eagles play. Yeah. It's going to be, Amaze balls. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. WrestleMania 40 on Peacock. Don't forget, you watch it with your friends. Invite your family over. If you don't have Peacock, subscribe and then cancel. No, I'm just kidding. I don't don't cancel yeah. Peacock. Keep it. But the, anyway, the funny yeah. thing about wrestling, I think I have I have less than ten wrestling figures, and all nostalgia based, like like Iron Sheik. Um, <laughs> I watched it as a kid in the 80s. Right, I think I kind of stopped in the early '90s because I remember when Undertaker started, and and that was like 1990 or '89, somewhere in there. I think yeah. I dabbled and watched, got back into it a little bit for like six months in college, but other than that, I don't really watch. I don't really know who a lot of them are. Well, everybody dabbles in college. Yeah. Yeah. In a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was curious, man. But, but like, I haven't, I have this weird interest. So, you know, like the Peacock Network has the, the, they either have the rights or they have a deal with WWE. And so they have all the documentaries and stuff. So, like, I just watched the new Bray Wyatt documentary, but I didn't know who he was. Mm. And then they just put on the, I guess Steve Austin has like a podcast show. 
and I just started Broken watching Skull podcast. Broken Skull. I just started watching that, and the, like you know him having conversations with Undertaker and guy that plays Kane and Goldberg, and like just listening to these guys and like learning about who they are, and like that intrigues me. I don't care to watch the show anymore, but like I do enjoy learning about who these people are. Yeah, and, and I think um, what was the the movie with uh. Mickey Rourke, the wrestler, right? Yeah, the wrestler, the wrestler was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Dude, when when it kind of opens your eyes to what these guys really go through. Yeah. So, uh, it, yeah, that was really interesting, and yeah, that's where I guess I have kind of moved on with my wrestle mania mm -hmm. type of stuff. But listen, if anybody in the Philadelphia area happens to have extra tickets, go ahead and shoot me a message, and we'll see what happens. I would love to go over there and check it out but yeah um i think it's pretty amazing that the, the fandom is there i think um everybody i talk to gets so much enjoyment out of uh out of wrestling that i never take that away from anybody if you guys like it enjoy it have yeah. some fun with it yeah and i i think it's going to be really exciting here in the philadelphia area <clears throat> when when everything starts up this weekend mm -hmm. And I will say this. I was at a WrestleMania where Rowdy, Rowdy Piper was in a cage match. He was trying to climb out. Um, so I don't know if it was an actual injury or if they, you know, theatrical, but his forehead was bleeding. It was amazing. And then my uncle hits me and goes, you know, that's not real. I was... <laughs> I was a little kid at the time, and when he said that, that's kind of where I started to move away from wrestling. But it was amazing to be there, and um, I, re I really do, like, if you guys enjoy it, enjoy it. Have fun yeah. with it. I think it's going to be pretty exciting next week. Yeah. Getting a lot of interesting stuff out of the chat, but no, it's a good time to be a wrestling fan right now, especially with what they're it's doing over time. at WWE. Yeah, it's not something I follow, but I, listen, I think it's a great time for rest, wrestling fans out there. I mean, I there's so much excitement, and it's just constantly in the news now. And I know that it's coming out of a bad thing with yeah. with Vince, but listen, it's it puts it back in the spotlight. So I'm excited for the fans of wrestling. Yeah. Not for myself. I'm not jumping back in, but I'm excited for you guys. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun um, this weekend. And I think it's going to take things in wrestling to a whole new level. I think the fans are in for a treat. Um, the writing has been fantastic. The story structures and what they've been laying down has been awesome. And it keeps me hooked. I've been watching every episode of Raw and SmackDown start to finish. Not, not NXT. I got shit to do. But – the point is, is that it's just, it's it's been a, a fantastic time. It's better than ever. It's like having the Attitude Era back. But uh, but enough of, about wrestling. I, wrestling. I will say this, guys. Um, well, I don't. I didn't mean to put that on myself. Um, <laughs> we jumped from Transformers to wrestling rather quickly, so let's go back to Transformers here and. Okay. Um, I think uh, the, the packaging, I think this is pretty cool looking for the guys that want to kind of finish uh, the, the movie series. I, although they probably still have a lot of characters they haven't touched yet, right? Yeah. Well, it's a weird thing because you do have the Studio 86 line. But then you had the, the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line, which was Target, which Target canceled, which now Hasbro just kind of rolled over into mainline. And so you get studio series releases, but then you also get outside of the studio series releases, but they're still generation one and they still blend right in with the movie release. Like it's kind of a mixed world sort of deal. Yeah. It's hard to keep it all straight in like, you need like a spreadsheet, which I have, in order to to do that, so if something's buzzworthy or like Spec was saying, studio series, um, well, I think they, they did yeah. a nice job with Sweep here. Yeah, yeah, he looks great. He'll he'll be a great cap off to the to the Dinobots. Dinobots. I, 
I think he may come with a flight stand. They don't really show it in those pictures, but then they show other product photos where he's on a flight stand. Because yeah, if you if it came in a flight stand, they would be showing that shit off, like with the deluxe MCU Black Widow. That for a lot of people, that was their first Hasbro flight stand. It should come with a flight stand, but I don't know if people will be willing to pay extra. All right, so I I, I went ahead a little bit here and I. Uh... Brad set up Shockwave for us. What do you guys think of the Shockwave? Yeah, so this is the 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 Bumblebee movie concept Shockwave. I think it's concept. Oh no, it's just Shock. He was in the movie. Um, he was in that opening Cybertron sequence. It looks good. I I don't think I'll get it, but it looks good. I I pre-ordered the um, comic book color Shockwave repaint. I thought that was cool looking. Um, yeah, this this shockwave is pretty cool, and I think, like you said, with the Bumblebee movie, they did um, a lot of justice, right? For Jenner, yeah, G one fans, it, did, it was really fun watching yeah. that open. That was a lot of fun. I mean, whether you had John Cena in it or not, um, but then we go back to wrestling now. But whatever, I'm not going to bring up. <laughs> I keep bouncing all over the place. This shockwave is pretty cool looking, but I do want to see if uh, like what happens with these releases. Are they going to sell out? Oh, uh, this is the one you just found. Yep. You son of a. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, look at the Cybertronian car mode. That thing looks sick. It's it's. Yeah. Dude, how long will it take you to transform that? Um, it, it's actually not a very difficult transformation, but, and then like the well, arm articulation is a little wonky, but yeah, like the leg articulation and whatever for the poses, badass. Yeah. Yeah. It was, we're seeing some really good stuff out of this. I mean, I had to scrounge for my generation's Earthrise Sunstreaker. Like I had to like get the right one from eBay because I couldn't find it for my Lambros. I got it off Amazon. Yeah, but this one, yeah, you're, you're selling me on it, Spec. You really are. It's it's a good... Yeah, and you know what, uh, Spec, what we, what you just said, um, it's kind of like the engineering is getting to the point now where you can get these dynamic poses with Transformers, you know what I mean? And, and really kind of emulate some of the things you see in the comic books and yeah. the movies and the cartoons. Uh, for some better action shots and then still end up with a cool looking robot or a cool looking vehicle at the end. Yeah. Let me just say, it is a great time to be a Transformers fan. If you're reading the Skybound Universe stuff right now oh, from Image, so no good. spoilers, but um, shout out to Daniel Warren Johnson who did uh, do a powerbomb, loves wrestling, and he, not to take it back to wrestling, but there's a lot of wrestling moves in the current Transformers comic. It is awesome. And like, yeah. Zen was saying, you can recreate a lot of that stuff. The stuff I'm seeing straight out of Hasbro, shout out to Takara Tomi, the three zero stuff, the Super 7 stuff. I'm having fun with the reactions. Like, it's it's a great time to core class stuff, right? And then you start talking about, you want to talk about ultra premiums. The Transformers fan has so many great premium options. Like, it's it's incredible, like the stuff you can get your hands on now. Um, and so Leanne was showing off her DLX sound wave on her on Instagram, and it's like, I need to save up my money because I want that sound wave and ravage for real. I need it. It's 11, 12 inches. I don't care. I'm just post that. I'll take that second to work. That you need that awesome. 12 inches, KJ. I already got the 12 inches, but the point is, <laughs> the point is that it's just a great time to be a Transformers. Fan. I think the 40th, there's going to be a table read. Um, uh, Peter Cullen, uh, Frank Walker, a lot of the original OG voice actors are going to come back and do table reads of like the pilot episode. And then they'll show the other three episodes afterwards. And that's coming to Fathom events. Yep. So, so be on the lookout for that. May. And, and yeah. that's a real, that that's a really cool like fan service. Right. Yeah. I mean, to, to get round tables with those guys and get it out there. Um, really cool stuff, man. And you're right. Those comic books, Broseph, Mick Joseph. 
I'm Dude, telling that, you that, that Travis put out this post one day. I had no idea about the Energon universe, and I'm all in. I'm all in. I can't seem to find Void Rivals. I can't seem to find copies it's, of that. It's people are snapping it up. And here oh. in LA, it's hard to get your hands on that stuff. I'm just going to wait for the trades. There's The trades for Void Rivals is out now. So you can get wish you just came out today. Show off. And what number are they up to? Because I think I have Eight. one and two. Eight. But they have done, they're on like their fourth or fifth reprinting of the first issue. They're, yeah. they're, they're doing lots of reprints. Okay, I, I have everything for Transformers, which is an incredible read. Uh, I didn't think I would enjoy it as much. Duke? Yeah, Duke is awesome. No spoilers from me, but yeah, it's... It I'm is... not giving any spoilers, but I think Duke is the best of the reads. Okay. Duke's great. I've been enjoying Cobra Commander a lot, too. Um, really quick, I just want to show off a couple of things uh, from the chat. They're super toy related, so don't at me. But once again, um, yeah, Transformers um, and Cinemas only May 15th, 18th, and 19th. There's that table read. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So this is not the animated movie. This is the show from Sunbow, the same people who did the G.I. Joe series with Toy Animation, T-O-E-I. And Peter Cullen and Frank Walker are going to be back for the 40th anniversary. Transformers 40th Cinema Event.com. So if you're going to get your tickets, get it. I remember... When they did G.I. Joe the movie, I think it was either last year or um, two years ago. But that was a lot of fun to sit up with fans. And also, Void Rivals trade paperback. So if you haven't been getting the singles, get the trades, $16.99. You can go to your local comic book shop, support them. You can give your money to Lord Bezos if you want to. You can go to Amazon. Bezos already got enough money. Go to your <laughs> local shop and get that collected edition of Void Rivals. And don't forget to check out the rest of the singles afterwards. Number seven, number eight, like Spec God, who beat me to it, you jerk. And then also uh, everything hey, else. Hey, I'm sorry. Record. I don't mean to cut you off, but I love that you said Lord Bezos. I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, guys, listen, uh, just like you're supporting a, an independent YouTube channel by hitting those like buttons, Go out there and support your local comic book shops. The small businesses, they love it. They need you. They need mm us. Amazon, yeah, it's great and all. Get your, I don't know, get something like, I don't know, your your, your socks or, or your socks or whatever you need off of Amazon. But go out and support local. I mean, uh, do you guys drink beer? I'm a beer guy, right? So craft breweries. Oh, hey, yeah. hold on. all I do is craft beer. That's the best stuff, man. Shout out to Yeep Crispy's Rice Lager. That's what I'm sipping on right now. There I got go. my Four Roses bourbon. I'm lit. I had to if I was going to do a show with spec. So I had to get Wow. Drunk. No, come on, man. I'm kidding. You know it's all love, man. Come on. I'm kidding. Support. Shout local. out to Stanley's mom for buying Stanley toys. And shout out to my mom. God rest her soul. Miss you. Love you. And also, really quick, for those, for the people we love who are still with us and those who are not, I'm going to give a toast. So you got it? Drink. To those still with us and those gone. Cheers. Cheers. Man, Which what one is a the Wednesday oh, night. No. What a Wednesday night. All right, let's, let's finish up this Transformers here. Um. How do I get that back up? Shift eight. Oh, right? add to add to stage. I got you. Wow. Okay. All right. So who's this guy? This is the gamer edition sideswipe, and he's he's popping up at Target too. I found him today, but I have no interest in grabbing him. Okay. It's kind of cool looking. Yeah, he's he's not bad. All right. So I never that, played. I never played it. that game, so I don't have an attachment. It was a fun game. You can watch YouTube. Um, if you got, don't have shit to do, but anyway. Oh, thanks, Stanley's mom. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, continue, please. No, that's awesome. I'm going to move uh, out of the Transformers here. But uh, listen, Transformers fans, enjoy yourself. You guys got some good stuff coming. And uh, I didn't see the comic book Shockwave. I did see it online somewhere. That thing is awesome looking. That's pretty yeah. cool. What, it's, what it's, was it? What'd you say? 
It's the, the comic book shockwave. It's a shockwave? pulse pulse exclusive. Let me see. If I can and, find it real quick. Yeah, I think it gonna, almost has like a cell shading in the yeah. front. Which is oh, no, I got it. There's you gonna to be a it? yeah. You can pull it up. There's gonna yeah, be a Grimlock it. version coming. So that'll be the fourth use of that Grimlock mold. Is this it? That is it. Um, okay. So this is. It's a Tell repaint. Me that's not badass looking. That it's looks a repaint. like something out of a Frank Miller comic book. Yeah. It's a repaint of the original Siege Shockwave, um, which I do have, which was a deluxe figure that came with like all the, the added armor bits. Um, and, you know, my I do Transformers mostly with my kids, some I keep for myself. And so he has that shockwave, and at some point during play or whatever, the rubber hose that connects to the gun arm tore out. So, so this is going to be my shockwave. My it's definitive shockwave. shockwave. Yeah, That's I think a it really looks great. Cool looking shockwave. And it it comes with the um, Optimus Prime's head from when they blew him up in the comic book, and then shockwave oh, okay. the head, and then um, I I still have. Uh, my wife's asleep. I'd have to go dig through my my comic bin to get it, but I don't remember the issue number. But it's Shockwave on the cover, in front of a brick wall, and like etched into the wall. Uh, what the are all is? dead? What the dude yeah. who did that cover? We we just lost him. He passed away. Oh. I don't want to make this sad, but we still have the art, and he's amazing. So let me see if I can find that. Yeah. So and it's it's a, I believe it's a flap fold box so so this piece of art right here all are dead that's on the cover of the box and then if i remember correctly that flap opens up and then you see the the figure that's and that's one of those iconic covers like you don't forget that cover no because it you know it almost has a days of future past feel to it yeah you you know what i'm saying like the you know it's always somebody up against a wall and there's like a spotlight on them Yep. Like they're trying to evade something. But yeah, that shockwave is awesome. I remember as a kid, this this dude down the street got shockwave. And I had no idea who he was. And I thought he was like a ripoff of uh, Megatron. Um, but I, I don't remember really I, I don't remember him from like season one or season two. But he's there, right? Yes. Yeah. He's in season one and season two. He stays behind on Cybertron. So he kind of like is holding down the fort on Cybertron while Megatron and those guys are. So I think he's in the the f- first episode. And then anytime they have reconnections with Cybertron or whatever, he's in those episodes. Yeah, that's when he's there. Okay. Yeah, because I was more of a sound wave guy. I think everybody's a sound wave guy. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there's nothing cool the sets jumping out of his chest. No, it's um I had to go to the Hong Kong one to find that one. So oh, it is a flap. Okay. I did remember correctly. Oh and then yeah, that Frank, that that shattered glass grimlock is pretty amazing. I also like the shattered glass jet fire a lot. It would it, right. it would appear that shattered glass is no more, which is Bad and like good. His ass on well, three three zero is still doing shattered glass, so there's that at least. Yeah, but I was getting all the the Hasbro ones, but if they end it, then it's one less thing that my wallet is breaking yeah. on. <laughs> a lot of great comics, uh, a lot of love for Transformers. Um, yeah, and Shockwave is always a cool character, right? Yeah, I mean, he's. He's a cerebral character. He's he's extremely intelligent. He's probably the smartest of all the Decepticons. And and kids like that. They gravitate towards education and intelligence. <laughs> That's what they gravitate towards. I mean, it was the action. They don't need the action. He's also like the mad scientist. So he's also kind of like the Dr. Mindbender of the series cuz mm-hmm. he'll he you know, fucks with the Autobots. I think it was it Sunstreaker. He did something with Sunstreaker's memory and like really screwed him up. And so, like, he, he's 
Yeah, see, Frank even said it too. Shockwave is the mind bender of the Transformers. And, and rest in peace to MD Bright, who we lost. Yeah. We lost some other artists too, but I'm going to save that for later. I don't want to make this too heavy. But please continue. Here, I'll, I'll make it a little bit funnier. This is, this made me laugh. Yeah, Ross Khan. Ross Khan for life. So, so thankfully, poor, Ross has finally started. Ross. Ross I'm has sorry, started. Like, to... I don't know if I'm behind because, like, I'm I'm just not the smartest person, but that was oh. awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're good. No, thankfully, Ross has started to taper off. Like, things were still hitting. Somebody was finally beating me to the punch on all of it, which is fine because the stuff they were getting, I didn't need anyway. And then I remember uh, messaging you when I found uh, the Vipers. I sometimes I go in like. Uh, I'll try a store like once or twice. If I have no luck, I never go back. So I'm not Dude. chasing the raw stuff. Oh no, I am I am I got this. This was my Ross pickup, Gundam Universe, eleven ninety nine. I was I'm having a ball. This is gonna be on the Black English YouTube as well. But man, I was doing like the most gangster poses with this Gundam. It was That's fantastic. Awesome. And that and they work because now I'm collecting another line. Now I'm collecting Gundam Universe. So thank you, Ross, for that as well. <laughs> I like that. Man, I didn't find shit. Space balls. <laughs> well, when I don't you're... know if you had to do that, Airborne, but listen, yeah. all I saw in my head was space balls. Yeah. We ain't found shit. That well, same dude was Tuvok on Voyager. When you're uh Oh, it was. Oh, that was? Yeah, that was Tuvok. Tim Tim Russ? Yeah. Yeah, Tim Russ. Uh, when, you're, call, uh, when your industry's in the middle of a giant strike and you're not working, you, you have a lot of time to go to Ross. So I found lots of stuff. Yeah. Lots dude, of stuff. Dude, three bucks. I had to, I had to, once I picked this up, I was like, let me leave before I buy everything else on this shelf. Three bucks. Just so, yeah. That? Fortnite. And this is from Fortnite. So it's just some guy from Fortnite. I don't know who, but I just needed someone from my stalker to like shoot at. So that's what I did. That's what I got. Well, who's the who's the guy in green that you got? That's Stalker. Who? From Retro Collection. This was at Ross, and this no, was three bucks. I'm kidding, man. Stalker is <laughs> one of my favorite characters. I know, I know, I know. But it was still Ross Con. Three bucks. The insult. But I still bought it anyway. Ross Con. All right, I think we're done with the uh I think we're done with Transformers, right? Yeah. This is the last episode of Toy Kind of Mood because we scared off all of our viewers. No, we're still at like 46. All right, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I appreciate you guys sticking around. Oh, 49, we're back up. Yeah. All right, so I want to talk about racism and hooded Cobra Commander. Nice, nice. Uh let me just say real talk. Real talk. Those numbers go up. So, 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 real talk. Make the hooded Cobra Commander because motherfuckers wearing hoods are fucking villains. That's the point. So, make the action figure. You're not saving anybody. You're not protecting anybody. So, tell the Bonaventura over at Paramount. Tell Skydance. Tell Larry Ellison to get his kids to talk some sense to that dude, so we can sell some hooded Cobra Commander merch. So I can have a crimson hooded Cobra Commander. So I can have all that. I'm getting once a man mutated Cobra Commander. Motherfuckers wearing hoods and masks and shit. They're villains. They're storming the fucking capital. Fuck them. They're lucky you know, they don't get an Ashley Babbitt guy, man. Fuck that. So make the figure. Sorry. And I'll leave it at that. No, you, you know I got the Crimson Cobra Commander. I know, man. I'm soloing you. I'm soloing you. I know. Oh. It's just... Guys, awesome. come on. So, so just make it happen. They're villains. They should be treated as villains. They're and villains, villains wear hoods. So let's just get it over with. And this is the black dude, the Latino dude, and the white, perhaps Middle Eastern dude, but I don't know because I don't know him that well, <laughs> saying that. So there. Bring, bring, oh, uh, look, our viewers went up. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah. I, I, and I'm, I didn't mean I was joking. I didn't mean to touch a nerve. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just joking. No, nah, there's no nerve touch. I think most of the GI Joe community wants hooded Cobra Commander. There's uh, listen. There's the community out there that feels they have to advocate for everybody that they do not represent. Right. 
So yeah. like there's there's nothing wrong with hooded cover commander. Bring him yeah. on. Bring him on. And yeah, I think there's... I think eventually we'll get him if if we're loud enough, right? I mean, the thing is who are they protecting? The only people you're protecting are the people wearing hoods. <laughs> There's no yeah, both would, sides would... of them. There's no good people wearing clans hoods, burning cross. Oh, those are the friendly cross burners on my lawn. That's fine. I don't have anything to worry about. Like, no, man. The the Cobra Commander wore a hood for a reason. You did you who watched G.I. Joe Resolute? They were capping motherfuckers left and right. Bazooka didn't make it past minute two. All right. Yeah, spoiler alert for something from 15 years ago. Anyway, but as kids, the comics never talked down to us. Larry Hama didn't talk down to us. Sometimes your heroes die. Sometimes your heroes are motherfucking killers. Yeah. But that's what war is, you know? And as a society, we welcome them back. So we bring them back to home back to life that's what wounded warrior project's about don't let don't get me started don't get me started like talk to talk to a vet he'll tell you he'll tell you what iraq was like he'll tell you what afghanistan was like they still wanted to finish the job we send these people off to die they're lucky when they come back so listen to them when you get the chance they will tell you they will tell you war is hell and they will tell you that they just need a place to make the world better it takes time, and people need to honor that. And it's not about making them into heroes. It's just treating them as human beings. That's 100%. it. And I'll stop. That's the rice lager talking. That's what that is. So. I think what's going to happen is, you know, we're at what? We're at 120 Joes now in a three-year span. They're going to get to a point where they're just going to have to release it. Yeah. I mean, Maybe we're not. the road to 100. Right, we're past the road to 100, yeah, and uh, we're we're in the hundreds, and we got the weirdest name drop the other day. Which yeah, but I I'm was so excited uh, about that one. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. <clears throat> so I I, I so think it's time. Me. I think that is a good segue right into this bad boy here. So listen, um, this mock up. Artwork here. I don't know if Roel is watching. That's oh yeah, but yo know, his shit is amaze balls. Um, the best. So uh, he put this together, Roel. If you guys aren't following, um, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's Ronin Doodles on Instagram. He's uh, he's part of the the problem on the internet where his 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 uh mock-ups are so well done that they get shared as official images yeah right and i applaud him for it and i would love it if uh hasbro were to bring him in to help them yeah. put stuff together but uh i don't know i mean that that's such a cool looking concept here what do you guys think I, I, this is what I want, but I want it to have the head from that, from the movie still on the side with the multiple eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure what he used as a base for the mock up here, but I, I do, I do know what you're saying with the multiple eyes. And, um, I think he needs to come with a roadblock accessory or at least a roadblock head with the, the blinded eyes. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. That would be amazing. That would be that that would freak out the fan base if they if they released Cobra Commander, but they included an alternate head for Roadblock that had the, the blinded eyes. Would that not make everybody fucking well, go out it, of their mind? <clears throat> it should be it should be a two pack. Probably a convention exclusive. So it should be a version two roadblock with the blinded eyes, head with the normal eyes, head with the blinded eyes. It should be that Cobra Commander, but then there should also be the more snake like Cobra Commander that can coil around roadblock. Yeah, it's like more just the same. Yeah. That it, make it that a true would, deluxe. That would be a huge blowout. People would but go. You know what? We're at the point now where 
we we don't need another roadblock body with it. No. Right? If you're this deep into the line, you've you've got roadblock. Just give us the two heads. Or give us a the one head with the blinded eyes. Uh so let me yeah. give some love. We don't have the B two roadblock. To uh Ronan real quick. Let me share his socials if I may. So the dude's on fire right now. Give my dude a follow. Once again, Ronan8180. The it got me fooled. I was excited until I was like, oh wait, that's not the thing. I love his repaint of the SMS back into the original MMS with Colonel Hawk. Steeler. Steeler would be a great place to put this, actually. Um, tactical quick kick. The list goes on and on. And once again, holler at my dude on Facebook. The face, if you're still on the Facebooks as well, don't look at that. That's my personal stuff. That's the danger of going to Facebook. You'll see some personal shit. But anyway, um, yeah. Check out his Facebook as well. And I'm just going to cut this off because you've seen too much of my digital life. So, well, let, let me tell you something right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to get solo here because we brought up Ronan Doodles. Um, I worked, uh, I made a custom the other day. I sent it off to him and we collaborated on a uh, card back. So I, I know I'm behind the times on everybody else when it comes to like getting a review in, but I think you guys are going to be blown away when I do this video in the next couple of days. Uh, okay. I, I did get to collaborate with Ronan and, um, or Roel, I should say. And uh, he really helped me out and he really added some punch to what I was doing. So okay. uh, in the next couple of days, I should have that video up. That was my I'm self promotion. I'm excited. Yeah, I've it, seen it's it. cool. You guys you are going to like it. I think everybody's going to really like it. It's Say amazing. It I said it's amazing. People are gonna. It's did a. Oh, you saw it. I did share. You did a fantastic you. job. I'm so slow with getting the the videos together. One because uh, I don't know if you guys can tell. I, I've got a slight stutter, so like it, it's hard to edit my videos down. And um, it it's um he really helped me out. After I sent him the picture, he he hooked me up. So I think you guys will really like it. So a, as we go back to uh, Cobra Commander here, uh, I'm looking at some of the comments here, and it looks like there's some love there. Yeah, I think so. I think people are excited for this. I am. I definitely am. Uh, give me everything Cobra Law. I don't understand the Cobra Law. I hate People have no fucking imagination. That's okay. I have enough imagination to make up for that. And I want Pythona, Nemesis, Enforcer, the Troopers, Globulus. I want all that shit. I want this. So, yeah. At a bare minimum, I want something like this. You, you, you know what? You bring that up. Cobra Law. The hate for Cobra Law. I think for a lot of guys, uh, they were just at that age where it, maybe it jumped the shark for them. With the Cobra Law, but here's what here's what I want for classified. I would love it if they modernized Cobra Law and okay. they made it a, a certain sect of Cobra where it's more I don't know real world where it's not that you know that what Cobra Law is. But then for the retro line, you do Cobra Law. Yeah, yeah. the Cobra Law that we know and and that so many love. Right, I would love to see a modernized version of you got um Nemesis Enforcer mm -hmm. on the classified side, make him decked out with like a jet pack that comes out almost like Archangel, you know what I mean? Something kind of cool like that. Modernized real world that's what classified is to me, and then for retro, go over to what everybody knows and loves from the, the movie, from the yeah. comic books. I, and I think the Joe team, they've done an excellent job with Classified. Like, even if people didn't like the Wave 1 sci-fi gold shin guard shit, like, it just got better and better afterwards. And they were able to translate those classic designs 
and they kind of skipped the movie. They kind of did concept art for a G.I. Joe movie that doesn't exist and then made figures out of it. You know, so I think they're going to do the same thing with Nemesis Enforcer and Pythona and everything else. And I think this Once a Man Corporate Commander is going to be a statement about how they're going to treat all these other different eras of G.I. Joe. I, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what they come up with. I, I, I think they have um, they're, they're still evolving. Right. And they're still reacting to what the fans are saying. So, yeah. like, that's why you have this mix of you have classic bazooka, classic outback, classic mm -hmm. quick kick in the classified line when really they should be part of the retro line. Okay. Right. They, they really should be. Like, I like would be, Yeah. Exactly, and I, I would like to have seen an updated quick kick in the classified line. Okay. Something a little more modern, not barefoot. You know, I love quick kick. It, he came out fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but he should be on a retro card. I, I, I totally agree with you, and I think there's so many people who are so fundamentalist or traditionalist about G.I. Joe that if the first quick kick we got in the classified line was a tactical – quick kick like the one that Ronan Doodles is talking about that Tony Figs is talking about with the plate carrier and boots and all that kind of stuff pursuit of Cobra quick kick people would frog at the mouth like they had fucking Alka-Seltzer in their mouths right and then they would have to be screaming and kicking until we finally got the retro card quick kick so but part of this screaming is screaming and kicking has gotten us the retro line away from Walmart right screaming and kicking cost me this badass concept art Storm Shadow with the Yazuka sleeve. I'm still pissed off at all these so-called fucking Joe fans that were so mad at Wave 1 that I couldn't get this fire-ass concept art Storm Shadow. Haya Toys had to make it in 4-inch scale. And now I'm buying all the 4-inch Haya Toys. Spirit, the Crimson Twins, Gung Ho, Zartan. I'm buying all of them. And if you guys don't shut up, about all the cool fucking shit we're getting in G.I. Joe, I will drive to your house, grab your Joes, and fucking burn them in a fucking trash can. This is what the classified line needs to be. For me, modern updates. I'm also going to co uh, collect the, the retro line. The retro line, right? Come on, guys. The retro line is awesome, but it can be its own separate thing, and you don't have to collect uh, numbered figures, right? You don't have to feel the need to collect every single figure. You get the ones that you want. The retro line is fucking a way for them to double dip and really take advantage of these characters and appease all fans. We we don't need. We don't need everybody to be a, an upscaled version of what we had as kids. All right. yeah, but sure. if you want that, collect that. But that should be in the retro line. <laughs> Do, am I right? You're right. I was just Frank. Frank made a fun comment saying he's not going to invite you to play Joe's now. <laughs> I used to get beat up a lot for my opinions about toys. <laughs> yeah. So many hits we're we're gonna have to start air doesn't grow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so many... Baldy, I'm gonna come over to your channel. We're gonna do this on on your channel, basically. You're you're giving us shine right now. So. Am I pissing people off? No, no, no you're blowing us up, dude. Yeah, for real, you know what, baby. We. They're not. If <laughs> I were doing this, they wouldn't be watching me. They don't care about my black ass. It's fine. Controversy <laughs> generates interest. See, we're up to fifty four now. Yeah. Oh, we, we were at 59. Then I started cursing and scaring off people's nieces. Um, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to. All right. Well, let's go back to uh, Trav put so much work into this stuff. Yes. Yes, he did. That let's let's give him some love here. And I, I'm still learning how to hit all the buttons here. But uh, what do you guys think of these retro carded figures? So we're just talking about love for the retro line. Um Personally, I think amazing, but I have a couple couple things I'm not happy with. But Beachhead, let's start with Beachhead. What do you what do you guys think? It's perfect. He's, no notes. Yeah, Give me. 
perfect one to one retro translation. That's not beachhead. Let's say. Sorry, Trav. I'm totally messing up your shit. There you go. There's beachhead. Um, yeah, amazing job with beachhead. Uh, again, I'm very happy with what we got already, but that Cobra Island beachhead was a bitch to get for people. This gives everybody a chance to get the beachhead that they want, right? Um, he's the coolest looking version of Snake Eyes out there. <laughs> but no, he's he looks really cool. I, I I think they they nailed it with this. Um, I'm glad that he's on the retro line. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, I'm gonna pull up the original Cobra Island beachhead while Spec spits his science. Yeah, do I mean I think? don't know I don't know what there is. To, like I said, it's it's a perfect one to one translation uh, from the actual figure so it's it's one of those like everybody else i'm perfectly happy with the cobra island version that i'm looking at on my shelf right now um but uh, i'll get this because i'm all in and it's I mean, well i'll have to see once i get them in hand which is the one that ends up staying on the shelf but i mean i remember when i was joe hunting it was insane trying to get this damn beachhead. And like people were complaining about nerfs and whatnot. It's like, look, I couldn't even find this sucker, man. So I don't want to hear people crying about nerf guns and shit. Like I couldn't, sorry, sorry for the swears. But it was just hard just to even find it, just to find it. But even seeing that it's a different shade of green, like bringing it closer in hand. Uh, hold on, Baldy. I'm going to go ahead and bring it back to that. Um, uh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm messing around, but go ahead. No, that's all. Just I can't, I don't have a back to back right now, but yeah, just seeing like it's a different shit of green than Cobra Island was, right? It was just, yeah, it's a, yeah, much, well, it, it, it's a more vibrant yeah. green, right? It, it, which the original figure was. Yeah, it, it's a more of a pop, which is, listen, I love it. I'm all in on retro and I'm all in on classified. But I like the separation of the two. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, let's see what the chat is saying real quick. Sean Forrester is saying Beachhead is cool. The other two aren't retro enough for me, just army builders. That's fair. Sean, um, I'm with you, Sean. Team Sean. Yeah. Blitz is saying they missed a mark on Serpentor tennis rackets at the ferries. Oh, and the snow serpents. Not serpents. Yeah, I think I think everybody's biggest gripe out of those three is with the snow serpent because it doesn't come with the original loadout. It has the newer well, stuff. I'm not that good at the slides, but we've accepted that to this point. So let's let's go over to uh, the snow serpent and okay. kind of. Go ahead and talk about that, but I agree with you. This is a lazy repaint. This is Which, lazy to me. And and that's fair. And for me, I only got one of the classified release. Because, you know, it was a deluxe figure. It was expensive. It was so for me, this is the I'll get two of these. This is the army builder. Yeah. And then actually it's the inverse for the eel because I got two eels. So I'll get one of the retro eels and that'll be the squad leader. Yeah, I mean, I, I was happy with the deluxe and you guys know my love for the modern update classified. But where I feel like this is a misstep, I'm not going to go as far as to say it's a slap in the face because... I don't think it is. Uh, I, I think the G.I. Joe team is trying to appease so many different fans. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think it's a slap in the face, but at the same time, hey, if you're going to go ahead and release these hard-to-find snow serpent figures, mm -hmm. and it's a retro line, give us the retro gear. All of it. I, yeah. it it's not that hard. I mean, um, I get the... The, the machines for the molding for the, the figures themselves, that I get. But give us the classic 
shoes, or right, the snowshoes. Uh, give us some of the classic loadout, especially with the eels. There's a big misstep with the eels, and Etsy pages uh, are blowing up with their 3D designs, selling the correct spear and backpack, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is great. You just got to see you guys drive yeah. as well, but yeah. I'm just kind of bad one. No, I'm just saying that it's all money, right? If you have a figure that has open gun hands but fists and chops and all that, all that's money. The temper graphs is money. Those snowshoes are money. The weapons are money. It's all plastic going through tooling, going through molds. So if we get those snow serpents and they're decked out with accessories and they end up peg warming like Retro Lady J, like the Crimson Guards in some places and whatnot, like that's a lot of money, a lot of material, a lot of plastic sitting on shelves. I Part of me doesn't blame whoever at Hasbro made that decision to pare down the snow serpents and the eels. But man, I wish they would trust us. I wish they would trust the troop builders that well, we want that stuff, all that stuff. I think Wait, I just wanted to uh, kind of highlight uh, this, <laughs> this, this new comment from Tra Travis. Travis uh, Modi. Yeah. Uh, Moody. Yeah, I guess he's French. He's probably from overseas. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Travis, or Travis. <laughs> Mr. That's Moody, you're needed on set, please, Mr. Moody. Um, I think Lenny is is the one that's in charge of, like, the budgeting as the lead designer. And I think if he were able to have a transparent conversation, it kind of breaks down into, like, what you said. If If... If he laid it out in front of us and sat there and said, hey, what would you rather have? Would you rather have era accurate retro snowshoes or would you rather have jinx with an alternate head or quick kick with an extra set of hands? Or And and I think that those are the decisions that he has to sit down and, and like work through in his own brain. What would the fans rather have? What do I want to give them? Okay. We have a mold for an existing snowshoe from Snow Job and the Snow Serpent, so I would save money there so I can do this for this other figure. And it, Dude, yeah, it puts him between a rock there. and a hard you, place. You are talking way too rational. <laughs> okay, that just that just <laughs> does not make sense. That will never do well on the socials. All right. <laughs> Hold on, they, I gotta highlight. Okay, okay, fine. Fuck Lenny. Give us the fucking snowshoes. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, Lenny. Kidding. Totally respect everything you do. Uh, uh, Stanley says, uh, Trav, when your beard is the length of Baldies, then you may turn your camera back on. Hashtag beard envy. Yeah, these guys have magnificent beards right now. I need to get some beard oil so I can at least catch up the spec. I'll never catch up the Zen. I can catch up the spec at least. Oh, I think I had mine at about a quarter of what zen had but but my <laughs> wife like loses her shit she's like you gotta cut it <laughs> i actually i i it was down to here <laughs> and i cut it you gotta you gotta it. braid it you gotta you gotta you gotta do like the oh, viking I, listen i have uh just from my my one family member i have six nieces and they we we were on vacation they're like can we braid your beard <laughs> i'm an uncle Yes, of course you can braid my beard. I sat there and they all went to town, man. That's Maybe crazy. one day I'll share that picture. I don't know if I will. There's a lot of sparkle. No, that's great. That's great. Well, but well yeah, listen, uh, I, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I was looking at that last comment that you had. Uh, the Joe bros are never happy. Well, here's the thing, because I'm a Joe bro and I'm happy. And the Joe bros, those Joe bros don't speak for me. That's why I'm on Instagram and then YouTube because I'm having a blast right now. And I'm, I feel like I'm a yay-sayer. I'm not necessarily a naysayer, but I'm a yay-sayer. And my honest opinion is this is a golden time for action figure collectors. I remember the dark days. I remember where you had to go to a comic book shop if you wanted that Toy Biz Marvel Legends because that was the only place yeah. to get it. Diamond Select was the only one making the characters you wanted for your collection. If it wasn't an action figure, it was... A statue or hero clicks. I was collecting hero clicks. These guys, I don't think they'd live that life. They like the attention, they like making noise, but they don't speak for me. These people who are just angry 
angry as heck at this stuff. They don't the the thing is, there's no wrong way to collect. There, there's no wrong way. If you want to be an inbox collector, if you want to be a loose collector, uh, if you want to be uh, a collector that likes their boxes kicked across the pavement, you could do whatever you want. There's no wrong way to collect. You, you should have fun. Just yeah. have fun with it. If you want to take pictures, if you just want to throw them up on the shelf, hang them on the wall, who cares? It's your collection. Have fun. But with the G.I. Joe line, fans have been so vocal, and I don't think people appreciate enough how much these people are listening to the fans. This is why the, the retro line has moved away from Walmart and why we're getting a retro line. Um, so, I, I I mean, it is an exciting time, especially to be a G.I. Joe fan. Yeah. But some of this stuff is planned so far out. There's yeah. lead times when, when they're doing this stuff. 2025, so, 2026, they know what they're going to do. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying that it, it takes time to plan these molds, to plan the packaging, to plan everything. Um, and, and there's enough, yeah, there's enough to piss off a hardcore collector with the, the different packaging designs that we've been through with 120 figures. I mean, yeah, it, it's a pain in the deck, right? But it's, uh, they're, they're trying to appease so many different people shareholders uh different uh like walmart has their i'm sorry I'm not, the planograms like, yeah well i'm starting to start sorry uh walmart has their own uh environmental okay thing that they have to reach so they want to cut down on the plastic and so there's all these different things and you guys just don't not you guys. I don't want to say you guys. I'm yeah, saying there's people. Oh, there's, some some people. Yeah. What what's the loudest thing? What's the the, the most vocal thing? The people yeah. that complain, right? So like when they complain, that's the loud thing that they hear. So you're right. If Lenny were to sit down with us and say, "Would you rather have an extra Jinx head, or would you rather have the uh, uh would you rather have Snow Serpent now with his classic gear?" Yeah. There's no opportunity out there right for him to sit down with people that would be cool that would be really cool yeah but i, I also think there's only so much he's allowed to say too so yeah it's political uh, and, and it has to be because when you're in the corporate sector that's it's it's a business right there's so many things i bet they would love to do with this classified series i remember when six inch joe was theoretical the only place you would see it was custom work online on deviant art or or reddit or his tank that's it those were the only six inch scale Joes that were out. And then classified dropped in 2020 that the Lux snake eyes was a shot in the air. It was calling their shot. It's like, and this is yeah. going to be a grand slam out here. And it has been, we need a grand slam, by the way, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> right. So the thing is, it's a retro card, man. Come on, flash grand slam. You don't want that spec. Come on. I, I was, I was thinking of a different character. I, okay. I'll take a grand slam. <laughs> So I, I I think that there's just a lot that to be proud of. Getting the vamp. We'll get the dragonfly. I can't wait to see Imperial Grunt and Megatron Bullshotin. I messed that up. But all the toy optics. I'm going to see what you do with that dragonfly. I haven't like, even done anything with the his tank yet. <laughs> yeah. Same here. I had to talk myself out of selling it but the point is is that it's it's just a fun time right now and we can share that with each other that's it's a fun time yeah that's a, you, you nailed it it's a fun time guys just have fun with your stuff don't worry about what other guys are doing uh if anything it should it should invigorate your creativity right have fun specs spec has sent me some pictures where it's to the point, like, sometimes I'll get pictures where uh, my wife is like, can you at least have them send it to your burner phone? Like, <laughs> what, what my what my girlfriend uses? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I get to see some previews of some spectacular shots, and uh, yeah. it should be shared, man. Everybody, go have fun with your shit. 
Yes. And if fun for you is hanging it on the wall or leaving it in a box, just don't put it in a tote and throw it in your attic. That's yeah. that's where it gets bad. Like, just knock it off at that point. I'm not saying open your stuff, but enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I'll open at least open up some of your stuff. I like I like what Bug says. One to rock, one to stock. Once I start doing that, I can leave stuff on the card. Like I have basically like a soul power collection of just my favorite carded figs. Shout out to Run DMC. Shout out to Slick Rick. I got to get Notorious B.I.G. up there. But and then I started buying extras just so I could open them up. You know, like I want to I want to shout out two things real quick. <clears throat> Gun Bunny, who just said he's ready for a new HasLab announcement. I'm ready, but I'm not ready because I'm not ready to shell out more money. But Gun Bunny just did his custom vamp, uh, the Dreadnought. Yeah. Oh, man. Dude, I saw all that. Ridiculous. Hold on. I'm pulling it up. Yeah, yeah we're going to leave this one to you, KJ. Yeah, it's – and no, he, he went in, and I told him, it's like, dude, do like a special – I'll like tell you what, Gun Bunny thing. is such a fun freaking follow, man. It, Dude. You know when you have like some thoughts in your head and you're just like, I wonder, and then all of a sudden somebody like Gun Bunny just throws it up there. Yeah. I mean, I Gun Bunny gave us one of our uh, favorite episodes of Welcome to the Terror Drum. And um, it was an honor to, to be there and, and, and see him work. Um, I highly recommend it. Let me go ahead and pull up the screen real quick. Hopefully my computer doesn't explode. All right, there we go. So yeah, man, look at, look at this. That's look at awesome. that. Come on. And, and it's like, it's an updated Spears exclusive, right? I believe so. I believe Greg not. Ground Assault was a Sears exclusive. It's Sears, um, but, but he put his own spin on that. When I was watching that video the other day, I was like, holy shit. So this is an update. This is what the classified line is. It's an update to yeah. a classic design, but it's like it, it's a nice throwback to that design, right? Yeah, really. So you're right. On. It was a series exclusive back in 1986. Lots of love from Gun Bunny and paying tribute to that. He already had the Ram cycle, and that was an earlier episode. So yeah, now that we got this vamp, we're gonna see the ground assault. We're gonna see the Tiger Force version. We're gonna see the Desert a Storm version. They even had the Sears logo on the box. Let's go ahead and let's take it back to this. Look, come on, man. The dude went in. Yeah, he went all in. And then when you look, like, I know we're not able to pause here, but he added the logo. I'm pointing to the screen like you guys know where I'm pointing. <laughs> no, I can, I can got, pause. Yeah. He's got, like, a dreadnought flame effect around the wheels, the wheel well in the front. And then, um, so you'll see it if, if you go forward a little bit here. Right? You see that? And then almost like a Python Patrol design around the body. Um, just really well done. That's the kind of artwork. Like, this is artwork. He spent a long time doing it. It came out fucking fantastic. And this is the kind of stuff that should be celebrated, I think. This is the yeah. fandom that should be celebrated. Like, we're, we're all fans, right? So, like, it doesn't matter if somebody bought a vamp or they bought five vamps and then they do what they want with them. He's doing this and it came out fucking fantastic. I have nothing but props to Gun Bunny Customs. If you're not already following and subscribing, subscribe, watch this video, give it a like, and then just keep liking the videos. I did hear, though, from a good source that. He is a uh, Python Patrol Tiger Force whore. I don't know how true that is. Vegas. I don't know, uh, but I, I am subscribed to his OnlyFans. 
<laughs> only figs. Oh, I would subscribe to Gun Bunny's Only Figs so fast. I want to shout out KJ real quick because he sent oh, a little gosh. gift that showed up in the mail. The Pixie Designs doors and the roof for the vamp. And that was that was a very generous. You're very welcome. I got to put that on my vamp and the roll cage and the door gunner. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be insane. It's you know, I got those doors in the mail today, too. I paid for mine. <laughs> but I also got what I just did with that. Oh, Hold on, I got I'll, I'll solo you. I'll solo you. Hold on a second. Yeah. You got it? it? Well, I don't have the doors, but I okay. did get these. I did get these. <laughs> oh my god where did you get those from that that's on that's going on my van okay where did you so get those the, door, from? the doors also arrived uh i did get this too Woo! so again this is for the uh the the diehard retro guys you can get this. This is from Pixis Designs. Is it Man. Pixis or, or Pixies? Pixies. It's, yeah. There's no I E in it's, there. I, maybe it's Pixis. I, okay, Pixis Designs. I don't know. But King Grimlock on IG and Pixis Designs on Etsy. Yeah, check those dudes out. Check my I dude just, out. Gridiron I Studios. Know, I want to know where you got those truck nuts from because I was going to do, I was going to take some like silly putty and make a set and do a funny photo with it. But well, no, these are. Else, um, it's from CDs. Oh, yeah. CDs nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Zin, Zin, I'm I'm putting I'm giving out the Wu Tang invite. How how would you like to become a, a, a member of Toy Kind of Mood? Oh uh, hell yeah, man. Okay, okay. I'll I'll talk to Travis, Bobby, and the guys. We'll we'll we'll. Uh, We'll do like a special okay. ceremony, but yeah, yeah. Because I'm always willing to help you guys out. Listen, I'm a huge fan of toys. Everybody, I had Lawrence. You know, you know, punk with toys. You guys ever hear of that channel? Lawrence told me. Yeah, yeah, was, I'm, I roll with that dude. Yeah. Listen, he's he was such a good mentor coming into this. He gave me so much uh, good information. But one day he did send me one comment that pissed me off. I don't know if I ever yeah. told him it pissed, pissed me off. But he's like, you're not a toy collector. You're a Joe collector. And I'm like, no, you, you've got no idea of my collection. My focus yeah. is on G.I. Yeah. Joe. Yeah. My focus, my love is G.I. Joe. That's my first love. I mean, um, I got I got shit all over the place that's not on Instagram, that's not on YouTube because it's mine. I'll be damned Dude, if someone told breaking? me I wasn't a toy collector. Huh? Breaking? Dude, breaking too. I, like I got so much stuff here. I got so much stuff here. I, I had to, like, if, if I ever want to get laid, I'm just going to have to get a hotel room because they're never going to see this shit. Like, I had to. Unless I find the right one, unless she has her own collection, then we can have some fun. Um, yeah. Well, uh, so I, I feel you. I met a girl who's into toys too, but they're the whole nother. There's a whole nother realm of toys out there. <laughs> Talking about those Tommy Lee Pamela Anderson toys. Okay. Uh, yeah. we, we walked into an adult toy collector store, and I was that guy in the meme. I was like, where the hell are the G.I. Joes at? <laughs> this isn't a Marvel Legendary. You said that I was finding legendary yeah. toys here. And she opened my eyes to a whole new world. Yeah. Just all right, all right. My, just don't tell my wife. It's a family show. People brought their family members. Um, I got to give some love to your YouTube real quick. This isn't us saying bye. I just want to say go to this dude's YouTube channel, Baldy's Locks Reviews, at Baldy Locks. Look, man, we can get this dude to 2,000 reviews, uh, 2,000 subscribers, man. We're going to make it happen. But the dude doesn't stop. And this dude came up and helped <clears throat> us out. Look at that. You want You want vamp spam? You can get it. We'll talk about that later. Turn negative into positive right here, man. Well, the 60th well, anniversary, I got to get those too. But, Baldy yeah. just sent me a message. If he can hit 2,000 subscribers tonight, he will do a giveaway of a limited edition Jackrabbit from said adult collector store. Wow. Okay. 
That's he'll he'll even throw in batteries to go with it. It's 100% true. I sent him that message. Uh, these jackrabbits are waterproof. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's go ahead. Let's keep this going. We'll be here for five hours at this rate. We're still on WonderCon, aren't we? We haven't even yeah, finished we're, yet. Yeah. Oh, there's more? <laughs> yeah, there's so much more. We haven't gotten to uh, the ferret, man. I'm going to have to change oh. my briefs after this. Oh, my God. Listen. Um, all right. So we're on... What do you guys think of this guy? We I got, really I'm the guy. I'm the reason you couldn't get the eels from Amazon. I can't tell you how many eels I got. So, yeah. Um, uh, we got somebody joining the chat. What the? Oh, uh, he just couldn't <laughs> take it anymore. He was just sitting there at the window. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fired. I'm you're done. not fired. Clearly, you're doing a better job. I'm over. I'm over it. I'm over. No, 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 no. Eighty six forever. No, 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 no. There's come on now. <laughs> yeah, I had to no, say hi. Not. You guys are pretty much done, so I, I can ruin the last five minutes of the show if I have. Well, you're giving us only five minutes. We have. We're gonna. I would just spend that five minutes on the Ferret Scout's helmet. Yo, Trav. Thank you very much for the opportunity tonight. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. You noticed the uh, viewers dropped the second I got on. It was like 69, <laughs> and now it's a 70, and now it's 63. So that's proof that I'm done. You're my new replacement. Uh, you're poison, <laughs> Moody. But on a serious note, we may need a villain get, uh, host for a, for a little bit. For a little bit so if you are up to it and you can hang around i don't want to call you a fill-in or a sub or anything yeah, yeah. you've clearly done a better job than i've ever done we we, we can holler at that in in hq you know but i, I just want to holler about it on the air if i want to because it's fun nah, no it's, i mean it's serious fun, stuff we can if, talk if, about if i can there. help out yeah. you guys let me know i know i know yeah. i know thanks man it, it, yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on. We all got lives. Everybody's got things going on. I'm more than willing to jump in and help out. No, Same here. Same here. Yeah. No, and shout out to Sarlacc and KJ, man. You know what I mean? You guys have jumped on too, and hell of a show. I watched yeah, man. all of it. We're so. we're the ebony and ivory of the toy world. <laughs> <'Cause> we <laughs> all know people are the same wherever they go. Anyway. Where's Sorry. the auto tune? No, I need auto tune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perma mute Moody. There we go. <laughs> I love uh, it. But no, the, I'm glad we're getting the retro carded eel. Um, I'm glad Zen was here to class me up. I'm going to have to take care of my beard if I'm going to have to compete with Zen's beard. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, that retro carded eel, listen, for the, the guys that miss the eel when, um, for the guys that missed the eel on Amazon, this is perfect. This is great. You guys will get a, a, an opportunity to get it. Um, so I'm excited for the guys that missed it. Um, but again, I wish that it included the, the classic loadout. Yeah. Just differentiate it a little bit. There was no reason not to. No reason not to. Well, I think of the three retros, this is the one. I mean, I think it's a little poppier red, but like if you just look at it, this is the one where you're going, what'd they change? You really have to look at it to see what the changes are. Yeah. And it's fine. Listen, this is what they do. They, uh, they re-release some figures and they really take care of the fan base, but I would have liked a little more effort here just with the spear gun, with the backpack. Um, I feel like this one kind of phones it in. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm excited. I mean, I'm ex I, I'm good with eels. So I don't know if I have to chase after it. So you're not going to have me at a at target taking it out of your hands. Um, I'm not going to be super kicking anybody like a punk would. But uh, I, I, I'm excited for the guys that missed it. So it's a good opportunity for everybody. Agreed. 
I'm just teasing in the chat right now, but I, I agree with everything you said. There was nothing preventing them from fixing up the eel a little bit more. I think this was, if they're going to retrocard it, it was Rush. I would have rather seen a retrocarded Cobra Trooper the same way that the uh, Super 7 reactions have, like the H-back or the Y-back. Do that. Let's grab that. Let's grab those Cobra Troopers back. And not just the officers. I mean, like, the troopers from 2020. So... Man, man, I want to. Um, <laughs> yeah, he is. I want to. I want to jump in on this subject. We talked about it on the full force. So shout out, Chris. We had a fucking funny show as hell last week. It was awesome. That was but, a great um, show. I was. I just thought, man, this would have been much better received. Actually, had they released the snow serpents and the eels just like this in a regular box and called it like a variant. Like, use the number they had. Well, the Snow Serpent Deluxe is different, so that could have a new number. But the Eel, they could have just put, like, the same number, like the Cobra Commander. Remember the Cobra Commander had, like, the light blue, the sky blue? Yeah. And then they had the Redeco Roadblock Scarlet. They had the Redeco Duke. They could just call this a Redeco and then call it, hey, we wanted to give everyone an opportunity to get this like fan channel or every retailer like you know instead of just the amazon exclusive you know it was like hard to get that's what they should have done instead of slapping it on a card and calling it a retro and then the snow serpents that same thing you know give it a, an original number i guess but say hey we're going to call it like the snow serpent you now you could troop build them they're affordable they're easier to get they got the classic colors where and then just say hey we're going to make retro versions of these soon you know i think that yeah. would have been much better uh dwh brings up a good point that retro eel has like they're just like little bits that they they've done but they like you said travis they could have done further and i remember getting those field variants getting the regal variant of cobra commander and not like the snake serpent uh the snake supreme that they had right um but mm -hmm. like you're saying like just little tweaks that take it closer to like what we're looking at, what what we want, right? And so, like with these, um, like with Beachhead, you can do the retro. But it would have been cool if they if this came out in 2020, if this came out at the same right. time as Cobra Island Beachhead, I would have gotten both, right? Wouldn't you guys? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I get absolutely. what Spec is saying. Like he can't choose between the two, just for how hard it was for me to get Cobra Island Beachhead. Like, I remember a friend of mine threw away the box. I'm like, dude, you could have sold the box for, like, 30 bucks. Like, that's how crazy it was back in 2020. I can't mm -hmm. wait to get this thing and open it up and put it with the rest of my other Joes. How do you Here, guys feel about the green gun with that I, it's, tone? It's, it's a perfect tribute. It. Oh, Spec, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was just, I'm, I'm fine with it. Yep. I am too. I think this is going to be hard. It's going to be hard for this beachhead not to get five whiskeys, man. It's pretty spot on and perfect. Like, but especially comes in the retro card. Like we wanted this since day one. It's uh, it's nearly perfect. Yeah. And I mean, <clears throat> in regards to your gun question, and I know that this gun is specific to beachhead in terms of what he originally came with, but we are now at a point in the line, <clears throat> depending what you collect and how much of it you collect that there's a whole arsenal to choose from just within the Hasbro releases. So if there's a character that comes with a gun that you're not excited with, you know, be it from Steel Brigade or $6 Stalkers at Ross or, you know, whatever else, whatever loadouts from deluxe characters or, or whoever, there's, there's a plethora of weapons to swap out with, not even getting into your third party options 100 percent. i agree with that what did you baldy i don't know if you were here for my suggestion of how like the the, the retro carded eel and snow Ser serpent should have just been in classified boxes and just like hey we're rushing these out to get people a chance to get them because we know like you know they're hard to get or one's deluxe or whatever, instead of slapping them on a retro card and calling it a retro. Well, when you put it that way, 100%, I agree with you. I, I just feel like um, 
that the the classified team is in such a a hard spot, right? Mm-hmm. Where they're trying to appease yeah. so many different people that um right. Listen, they they got this rollout of, of the new retro line that's out there for everybody to get. It's not just exclusive to Walmart. It's easy for them to now pull from previous releases and say, "All right, it's retro." But if you're going to do that, give it the retro loadout. Mm-hmm. Um, so I agree with you. Since they did mm-hmm. not that, give us we the retro- are, right, and we understand that takes time. Right, because they have to tool like the different, you know, the skis and the right backpack and the right, you know, and then you know, talk about are we going to give them an AK forty seven and then all the new tool, all the Mark II design retro stuff, right? They're going to throw that in there for the eel. That takes time, but and you want to rush out the army builders because people can't get them and you don't want them paying yeah. on eBay, right? So just throw them back in the collection. They did it, you know, they did it already. So why not do it again? Yeah, and um. It- I don't know. It, it, there's so many different arguments for it. Oh no! <laughs> He's never gonna host again. Terrible. It's the Wi-Fi gods for Moody. No man, that's a bummer. <laughs> What's going on here? Well, hopefully he'll he'll reconnect. But as as I had mentioned earlier, it's not just a time thing. It, I think it's a budget thing. So it's just a matter of them having the budget to sit there and say, do we have the extra money to do the new tooling for this? Or would we rather do this? Look at that. It didn't last. He didn't even last a whole night under my guys. (laughs) He's done. Hasbro got him. I think he just chatted. Ha ha ha. So he's working on it. But while he does that, I'm not taking over the show. He can come back. There you go. They put a full screen boldly. <laughs> We're all just sitting and wait. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear you. What the hell happened? You pissed somebody off. Travis got jealous. I did. I made sure his uh, camera. Wait, what I sent what just a, happened? Ah, okay. yeah. Hack Romo's, camera. Romo's hanging outside your house clipping your, uh, your fiber lines. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't even know how I lost camera. Oh, you have to. Uh, you probably have stop cam. So press stop cam. Stop we'll cam at back. the bottom. Yeah. Good call, KJ. Hey, there he <laughs> is. There we go. And on that you note, know, I'll be I, honest hey, with you guys. My mom yeah. just got home from bingo, and she did not know that I was online with my friends, and she is not happy. <laughs> <laughs> you lie. Hey, look. But I just wanted to pop on because I was messing around but i'm gonna let you guys finish off the show baldy's killing it tonight yeah, dude, thank you yeah, everybody hey man stay. you're not gonna no. hang out you better sit your ass here man you're the one who started this if i'm here you're here yeah this is your baby man all right well how about we get 13 minutes left i don't want to tell you what to do but i guess i have to we got about 12 minutes left all right, listen, well, I'm, I'm all for that. I, I have an early meeting right. at work. So Same here. I, yeah, I yeah. Like you coming I, in. This is why you're the best moderator out there. No, not anymore, apparently. Bring it in. <laughs> Bring it in. Did we talk about the ferret yet? Because I not know I, I had to pee. Nope. We waited for you. All right, listen. Um, what do you guys think of the ferret? Let's uh start with our new guest here, fired ass moody. What do you think of the fire? Well, it doesn't matter because I'm fired. You guys don't care what I think. Um, man. All right. So that when we again, I'm going to refer to this because I talked about a lot of this on full force. So it's nice to have the follow up because we didn't get the nice pictures of full force. We were looking at a blurry angle screen. Shout out to articulated points, MCU collector, uh, you know, unparalleled universe, all the guys that recorded the WonderCon panel, but now we get to actually talk about the high-res images. And $54.99, how can we not talk about that right away, right? The, we were thinking 65, 69, 70 plus, because we saw how big it was in the in the pictures, and we were like, wow, okay, this is a good price, $54.99. And I saw people still complain. $54.99 for this is a fucking steal. All right, so uh, I I do have to ask, um, 
when was it revealed that it was fifty four ninety nine? Because that was my guess that it was going to be in line with the trouble bubble. And um, when, when did that get announced? Emily told people at WonderCon, so it could change from now till then, from then till now. So now everyone's like, Moody, why'd you say fifty four? It's sixty, whatever. That's like there was several people at WonderCon that asked her, and she said fifty four ninety nine, but it hasn't come out yet. I don't think. Wait, actually, no, it did come out in the Hasbro press release they sent everybody. Actually, yeah. let's see if I can pull. I can probably pull that up, but you you guys okay. talk about that, and I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, see if you can find it because uh, I have so yeah. much. I have such a, an amount of tape left from uh, making my double decker vamp that I could definitely put like four of these together and come up with like a quad quad. That would be amazing. And then hang the little mini truck nuts the off the back of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited for this. Uh, Spec, what do you think of the figure here? New design. I mean, it's based off the Valkyrie design or mold, but I dig it. <clears throat> I like the color scheme. I like the motocross style chest plate. The helmet design is awesome with all the little cues and Cobra fangs and everything. I like that they made them female troopers i wish that that there was an option like you could get a male trooper and a female trooper so that you had a good mix up of the two but i'm not complaining um at what they are giving us uh i never had the original ferret i had the tiger version whatever that one was called um but it's great uh, i'll probably get two because Swap it out with Tomax and Zaymod if you have to. Like, yeah, absolutely. Well, I, uh, my neighbor that I used to play with, um, his older brother had three ferrets and would not let us play with them at all. So <laughs> I'm super excited to freaking get my hands on a ferret. And I love that they really updated it, like you said, with the motocross design. Um, they killed it with that helmet. Uh, it's a great reuse of the Valkyries. Um, KJ, what do you think? Um, I think it's a great way to get um, that gray aesthetic. Uh, someone in the chat was saying that they love that it's going to be the same gray as the future Stinger vehicle. Um, I'm always DWH had just said that. Um, it's always great to get more female figures in the line, whether it's the ninjas or the drivers, the Valkyries. Uh, you name it. It's a very smart reuse. It's a great looking figure. It's going to look awesome on that ferret. I want that ferret scout and the Valkyrie right behind her. I want to put that evil looking Sharon Carter head sculpt on a Valkyrie and have her just blasting machine guns with blast effects while the scout's like, brah, it's going to it's gonna be great. I got it. KJ, the, the way you awesome. say that, um, I don't know if Leanne is out there watching this, but she definitely is one of my favorite people. Instantly, that, yeah. Yeah, that's making artwork out there with the, or photography. Um, I can't wait to see what she does with this. Um, very creative. So yeah. I'm very excited. I, I think they killed it with this. Um, like I said, I never had one myself as a kid. So I'm super excited that we're getting the opportunity to have this. Yeah. Trav, what do you think? Well, thank you, Caleb, for the subscription and that last comment right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, appreciate that. And then I, I'm pretty sure most of our viewers saw the, you know, I could probably just pull it up again really quickly because you guys were talking about the, the, um, no, on his yeah, the, the details from the his tank. Yeah, there you go. The hiss and the vamp. But uh, but no, there you go. So fifty four ninety nine. This is from the press release because we get sent those same things, but we don't we don't usually post them or anything. But his tank did his tank dot com, and it's fifty four ninety nine. And so it confirms Emily's uh, talk. And so it comes out already this summer too. That's a key. Like that's a quick turnaround compared to what we got in the past. Yes. And it'll probably come out even before that. It's probably already here, right? Like we're gonna get. Um, was it Jason Jaybird? You know, he's Yak Face. He has his other thing, and he's going to say, hey, it, 
it just arrived to us retail you know warehouses or whatever we'll probably get that in like two months so yeah. anyway yeah there's that well yeah i'm like i said i i think it's an exciting time to be a uh, joe fan this is really well done um i i love uh when people bring up the functionality of those missiles, of the guns, um, listen, it brings us back to childhood, right? It, it's play is based on imagination. Yeah. So let's let's have a little bit of fun with it. Who cares if there's true functionality behind it? We didn't care when we were kids. Um, no. And I, I love this reuse. I mean, her ass looks fucking phenomenal. <laughs> You know, <laughs> ask to the models. Baby um, yeah. got back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks amazing. Uh, the ferret, the colorway is sharp, right? Yeah. So you get the really dark navy cobra blues with the with the blacks, and then just hints of red on it. All the insignias and logos, and then you got like all the the main tooling on the weapons and the steering column there with all red. Um, it's 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 flawless man tony yeah. did a great job painting it and the design is great it's classic but it could still happen now it doesn't look ridiculous either you know you could still jump on one of these so could the cobra ferret scout she's gorgeous that like mm -hmm. that blue looks a little lighter from what we're getting on the ferret which works it matches the grays and the and the whites and i'm digging the helmet the helmet's worth helmets 55 yeah. bucks right there that freaking helmet you probably sell that on ebay 55 bucks it's, it's awesome. great it's you a great crap. contrast i'm with you on that, dude. I'm with you on uh, that what was kj's what was kj's no i want to hear from zen i want to hear zen oh I'm, right. I'm sorry i'm it's probably i've been drinking some whiskey um <laughs> but that that helmet it sold the vamp right when they were shown clutch with the helmet in the sand uh, everybody wanted to know what it was. It, it wasn't the hardest Easter egg to figure out. I mean, she was in the background, right? Uh, but they killed it. I do want to address one thing. A lot of people online have said, why can't they just release the ferret? Why can't they just do that? That would be really cool for the retro line. Why is it numbered? Why are we getting this figure that doesn't freaking matter? Well, the way they do it is in the classified line, the 119, we're, we're getting a new figure. They're for characters. The 119, the numbered, it's for a character with a vehicle. The same thing we're going we're gonna to get with Night Force uh, Shockwave, right, with the Ram, which is freaking amazing looking. It's awesome looking, right? Uh, but the reason you have these numbered uh, vehicles with characters is because there's a character attached. We're not going to get these things separate. They're gonna they're gonna include a figure, and that's why it's numbered because it has the figure. It has a character. It's the yeah. character that's numbered, not the vehicle, not the vamp. It's clutch, not right. the ferret, the scout. Yeah. Yep. It, it'd be mm -hmm. cool if they offer that. And maybe in a couple of years, maybe they offer the vamp or a version of the vamp. Uh, maybe they offer the Mark II as a Pulse exclusive by itself. Like so if, we get, if we get the Desert Vamp, pardon the interruption, if we get the Desert Vamp Mark II, it'd be a great place to put Tan Grunt or even Tan Steeler in with that vamp. Or, or even, even no figure at all. Okay. Right, we don't need. Yeah, but I think, covered. I think like Tony and Lenny are gonna be like, color up another one. Like you're gonna give us a different scout. Like there's more people who want the figure. Period. Right. I mean, yeah, I, want, I think I want the figure. You want? Yeah, the yeah. Figure. More people want the figure. More people are louder about complaining that they just want to pay. You know, those are the loud vocal minority. More people yeah. want to pay for the figure. They're not gonna put this out for thirty bucks because people are gonna wait for it to get clearance out at eight dollars at least if it's 55 dollars and there's a sale at target you're still gonna pay you know 35 40 bucks for it so well the no, I, I, I love the pricing of this i like the uh pictures you included here where it looks like she's holding a mod deuce on this 
The, right. the ferret's a pulse exclusive, right? Yeah. So yeah. Hasbro's being very smart about their vehicles. All their vehicles, Absolutely. with the exception of the bubble, the repainted bubble, yeah. and right. then the original... The Ram cycles. Ram cycles. Right. They're keeping exclusive to themselves. And, and I think that they're able to better control how many they produce... Mm-hmm. which helps them with cost which then helps them keep offering these but it also lets them pay attention to like hey we're selling x amount this is a hit we can move on and do another one this is a hit we can move on and do another one and that's what, and and they treat it kind of like that open pre-order we've all noticed that pattern with the trouble bubble with the vamp probably same with the hms it's an it's an open order, right? I can go on and pre-order however many I want right now. Once they start charging for it or start saying that it's going to ship, boom, it immediately goes to sold out. Yeah. They, right. Cause they got off. their count. You nailed it. You know, same thing with the van. That thing was open forever. Yeah. yeah now, that's why I couldn't even, I, even if I wanted to flip it, I couldn't because it was like, you know, open forever. I was glad to help friends instead. You know what I mean? And help me and, shout out to Trav. You know, they may do another run and open it up again at some point, but but it's very smart of them to keep control over that rather than trying to flood targets and Walmarts with it and then being out the money or watching these things go to clearance and then we just then get- that'll be the end of them. That yeah, would be exactly. the end of them. And that's yeah, so this is but smart. You don't the, want you want to keep it coming. On the plus side, the people who want them get them. The people who want extras get extras there's mm-hmm. no you don't lose with that well, right i mean that's a great point look at gun bunny right he got he got that extra vamp and he made that dreadnought right it, yeah there's so many creative people out there and i, I think that with the ferret you're going to see some creative customs we all know we're going to get the tiger force ferret yeah. right uh, what was it called? The Tiger Claw? The Tiger, tiger claw. claw. Right. And so, then the vamp was the Tiger Sting. Wait, Tiger Paw or Tiger Claw? Paw. P. Tiger Paw. Paw. I feel like I'm in Step Brothers where he, he goes, is it Pan? <laughs> it's Pan. Pan? No, no, no. I can pull it up real quick. I have it. So, but I mean, and I'll pull up the way, We all know Target's going to get their version. Yeah. So, save yourself Guys, listen, if you're watching this, save yourself money. Do not customize this into a tiger ball. It's going to come to target. They're not going to waste you, yeah. They're not going to waste the mold. Uh, let me find a target sting. Unless you're a gun bunny. <laughs> <laughs> well, gun bunny can do it and beat everybody to it. Right. Yeah, there's yeah. some great comments in here. The vamp tooling is uh, vamp tooling is probably already in use for Singer. Listen, they already future proofed this thing. So if you guys look at the vamp, and um, sorry guys, I wasn't really prepped for that, but sorry. About if you that. guys look at the vamp, whoa, 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 whoa. This, was, this was done on purpose so that they could put the different pieces in place. So this is this loadout is still going to be this well maybe not the same but they'll take advantage of these pegs and everything. So everything will be done in a way that they can reuse this entire mold. Yeah, they'll do the same thing for the ferret. Yeah. Yep. I didn't. I didn't pull that up. No, Travis is. He's trying to get us to stop. <laughs> well, KJ, you also have to get up early. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm lucky that I got a promotion, and they're working my ass. So, uh, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Same. Thank you. Bro, same thing. I'm working like 11, 12 hours a day. So, the fact that Baldy could come in here, and we, you know, and Tony and Bobby couldn't be here either. So, this, again, this means a lot to us and we can leave them hanging for more we'll bring you back and talk more we could talk about gi joe for the next five hours if we want to just do it another show i will say guys thank you all for hanging out and 
putting up with me learning on the job. Um, that's, it's been a lot of fun. These the guys point. are always great. I've, I've, I've been in uh, private messages with them, and we're always bantering back and forth. So it was really cool. Trav, I appreciate you letting me kind of dive in here tonight. Um, it, it seems like an April Fool's joke that got it out of hand. But uh, I had a lot of fun. Uh, you guys are always exactly. great and very yeah. welcoming. And I think that's what the Joe community, that's what the Marvel community, McFarlane, Transformers community, the wrestling community, it all needs that welcoming fandom. Let's just have fun together, guys. Let's just have yeah. fun together. Let me oh, just yeah. ask the chat. Let me just ask the chat this. Star Wars, we'll, we'll, talk about, we'll get everyone's social media out there and we'll get, say you a, a nice outro. Showing wrestling figures. Look, it's WrestleMania this weekend. No one cares when I do re when we do wrestling thing. But it'd be a nice break if I can. I don't know my schedule for work. But I can bring on some heavy-hitting wrestling figure review guests who do love G.I. Joe and other figures. If we do a WrestleMania special and talk about all kind of toys, would you guys watch? Tell me in the chat right now in the next couple minutes if you'll be here. I know Spec won't, <laughs> but I maybe KJ. I don't know. Nah, but, uh, you, you missed the part where where I said like I just watched the Bray Wyatt documentary. I've been watching. This I watch. Week. No, I didn't miss that. Oh, I was Roman home, Reigns. The Roman Reigns oh, wow. documentary is pretty awesome too. The Roman Reigns documentary is awesome. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I watched Dark Side of the Ring with John Tenta, Earthquake, and it was like Light Side of the Ring. It was a happy story. I mean, he died early, but he had like a very happy life, family life, and it was fun. But no, I, I did watch that. I've watched almost the whole show. You guys are killing it. You guys did a great job tonight. Thank you all. Seriously. And Tony said, fuck no. So I guess Tony's the boss. Remember? He's monetized. The boss Tony, Tony Keep Danza. PG, brother. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm lying. I'm such a hypocrite. <laughs> WWE watch party. WWE pass. Look at you now. Look boy. at you now, boy. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, all right. I appreciate this. Subscribe. Turn on alerts. Yes. Thank you. Like the show. Get our likes up so we can get more people watching. Yeah, we guys, had great numbers, likes, ago. man. Seventy people until I showed up. Then it went. Yeah, yeah, went yeah. And then it the the just plummeted. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, good. I see people leaving wrestling comments. Or we'll just talk about that next week. Maybe we'll see what's up. But let's get to Baldy. He's the, like the real important thing here. <laughs> um, if you want Baldy, since you're you're kind of the guest of honor, I can wrap this up with socials and we can. Talk about you for a change, man. Well, really you, quick, hold on. I need fire, yeah, fire ahead, emojis yeah. for Baldy. If you love yes. Zen, help this out. Fire. Let me see fire <laughs> emojis in the chat. Fire emojis for Baldy. Let's go. Let's, God, let's get the fire, fire emojis. Let's see it. Let's fucking go. This is fun tonight. Thank you, guys. Yeah. So subscribe to right now. If you're a ToyCon and Moody and you haven't yet. This is the most important thing you're going to do all night is go to YouTube on the side and like another window or something and look up at Baldy Locks all with the Z and give him a subscribe. That's that's going to be the best thing you'll do all night. And then tomorrow or tonight, watch watch some of his stuff. It's amazing. He's the best reviewer for G.I. Joe Classified, in my opinion. Very creative. Thank you, Trash. And then uh, subscribe to his, follow his Instagram, Baldy Locks with Z's underscore reviews or Dick Slaps reviews, as Chaz the Guru was. <laughs> Dick Slaps with the Z's. Yeah. So, yeah, go do That's that. Awesome. Go do that. Thanks, guys. Um, but hang around for a minute so we can promote the rest of, uh, uh, of these fools. Shout out to Bobby. Okay. Go follow him on a TikTok. He's got a lot going on. But he's got a lot going on creatively, and he's got some great things coming. It's going to take a minute, but, you know, as we get through the spring and hopefully in the summer, he's got a, some stuff to launch. We, we're not yeah. fully prepared to launch it yet, but it's big. This guy, for our channel, when it comes to pop culture, no one's better with the pop culture. Like, when it comes to, like, the hardcore comic stuff and the media stuff, like, we all know our pop culture, all of us. Tony, Speck, KJ, and myself, but Bobby is the king of pop culture on a toy kind of mood and like he's our comic con go to and he's we're going to start branching out that way with him and obviously we'll all be a part of that in some form or another so i'm excited for it and uh just shout out to bobby right now 
Um, okay, and then we got Tony's Figs. He's here almost every week, right? KJ, you want to take this one? Tony's Figs? Uh, you know I got love for Tony's Figs. He's fantastic online right now, and you just got to check my dude out. I mean, he's just really, really blazing ahead and doing fantastic work. He's got Vietnam Figs coming out. Uh, check out his OG13 series. He's doing stuff not just with Joe's, but talk about Marvel Legends, McFarlane DC Multiverse. The dude, it's it's going to be game-changing stuff. But just have fun. Enjoy the chill toy vibes. Tony's underscore figs on Instagram. Tony's figs 911 on Facebook. And, of course, you can go check my dude out on YouTube. It's going to be, you're going to have a great time. Yeah, put those videos, yeah put those both videos. both KJ and we'll get to KJ in a sec his channel but yeah Tony and KJ got their own channels right now they're off and rolling they got videos up so you know it's we got this family at first I was like nah throw it all in the toy kind of mood but nah that would be a major problem right now <laughs> working full time I was like unemployed forever you know what I mean so now working a lot that would not happen but the fact that everyone's got their own thing whether it's on IG or YouTube or TikTok or whatever, it's like it's it makes us stronger for sure. Um, and then Genghis, your turn, bud. Yeah, man. And like I always enjoyed um anything I do with a toy kind of mood. And I'm glad that people have been following the Black Genghis brand as well. Um, definitely enjoy yourselves with that. I got more stuff on the way. Adulting is hard, but uh, this stuff really makes it worth it and just getting love from the community has been a lot of fun. So thank you all very much for that. Um, at Black Ingus, wherever your social media channels may take you, except OnlyFans. I'm still to figure out what to do with that. Not explicit, but I can use the dough. Only figs. Only figs slash Black Ingus. It's coming. It's a lot of foot stuff. <clears throat> your turn, Spec Sarlacc. Oh, we're doing self-promotion now? You? Yeah. Oh, okay. This is the stuff that, like, when people actually want to enjoy themselves instead of watching a toy kind of mood, they can actually go here and have a good time. Yeah, Listen, yeah I'll, jump, I'll jump in here for spec, man. Oh, Listen, uh, these are the after midnight texts that I get. That my my wife is always like. Listen. Well, that's because you're on the East Coast, so it's only yeah. nine o'clock for us. I'll stand up on spec for that one. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's always like. Just go to your burner phone. Um, no, listen. Spec does some really creative work. And he runs it by a community of guys in the background. And I'm proud to be part of that community. And uh, we really get a chance to see like the, the raw photos behind everything. And this is a great follow. So... I, I would say follow this page for sure. It's some of the most creative pictures that you'll see out there. The lighting is unbelievable. He really makes uh, really great creative choices with the figures that he has. Um, dude, that that one picture to the to the far left where they're hitting they're hitting the foot soldiers. <laughs> he got my feedback on that. That was a lot of fun. I thought that was really well done. Um, there's not a lot of people like being that kind of creative thinking out of the box. Yeah. So that's a lot of mm -hmm. fun. dude. Uh, I, I yeah. think you should give yourself a pat on the back for that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'll second, I'll second that. I think as a whole, it, we're all criminally underappreciated when it comes to numbers and all that stuff. And I drive these guys crazy with that. You know, back. But spec, it should be like two point, you know, two thousand four hundred and twenty. Not two. Like it's crazy that you know, toy photographer extraordinaire, real life Hollywood cameraman. I mean, you know, you get you started getting going right only recently, right? Spec with the toy photography. Like how long has it been? Um, I think this count is two years old now. Okay, but yeah, I mean, I mean you really you know, like start putting yourself out there. It's why, it, like for a toy kind of mood it says yeah. three years, but we only really cared like two or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I'm mean, just saying I've for you, yeah, probably gotten more and more serious about it within the past year. But it's yeah, 
you know, it's Instagram. You're fighting the algorithms. Toy photography is a very saturated market right now. And and I very much appreciate all the commentary and, and praise that you guys are bestowing. But But there are a lot of guys out there that are so good. So good. So creative. Have a skill set that that and tools that go well above what I'm doing or capable of at this moment. And uh, so, you know, it's still it's a it's a learning process doing these still photography. I, I bring a lot of what I've learned as a cinematographer, but it is a whole other universe. Mm, that's good. Uh, to know. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's learning and growing and, and I would love to see the following grow and, and get more recognition, but I'm, I'm having fun. It's for me. I have fun with it. I'm glad and, that you guys enjoy it. I'm yeah. I'm excited when I get to share it with you guys before I post it. Mm -hmm. You know, I love getting the feedback and the critique and and I've gone back. I've the, the turtle van hitting the the footbot like I've <laughs> I went back and changed it 3 or 4 times because the you know the original version I tried doing sparks and I didn't think it looked good and messed this up or I messed that up and you know, it's yep. that whole thing. Uh, the one you landed on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Gotcha. Yes, yes. Great, great stuff. So this was an April Fool joke that my buddy Andrew was a day late on. <laughs> <laughs> he sent this to me because he's, he's a Kickstarter. That Even Robo did a whole video. Uh, shout out to Robo, don't know. Good dude. You might have heard of him. Uh, but he covered the Expanse Kickstarter thing. And then my buddy was like, oh, that guy. I don't think that guy looks like me. He's got a bigger beard and whatever. But I thought it was, it, it was funny. I was like, I'll share it on the show. So Andrew Lavulo. Thank you so much for uh, doing this. It's fun. So you guys want to back that Kickstarter. It's actually real. I'm not on it. But, you know, the if you're a fan of the sci-fi show, The Expanse, I guess it was a, a thing at WonderCon. So we're sticking with the theme there. Um, and then, yeah, just got a couple of reviews. I reviewed everything two weeks late. But if you, you haven't seen it yet, go check out the Big Boa review. I really like my Technova. I'm, I'm a big fan of my own Technova. The Big Boa review, I think, was bad. But Techno Viper, I loved what I did in this. I, I want you guys to check it out if you can. I really appreciate it. Guys, it's a it's a fun watch. It, what's funny, Trav, is that there's a couple concepts that I have in mind for my for my reveal. I'm still gonna do it. I don't care that it's been out for a couple weeks. But uh yeah, you had a few ideas in place. The only difference is I'm gonna have glow sticks. <laughs> that's the you only difference you actually got oh, that's, awesome. that's the only difference but uh yeah got it. that was a fun review appreciate you man that's that's big coming from you obviously um and then yeah if you're if you're new to the show you're watching because the guests look much more handsome and you're like oh okay i like this you just stumbled upon uh this show a toy kind of mood we're on social media instagram everything is at it just like black Genghis. make life easy at a toy kind of mood on even if you use x we barely you know we'll post stuff on there we don't you know whatever that's what my yeah, only x, figs content's on it's on x yeah only figs his only figs are on x uh triple x but yeah at a toy kind of mood uh and then yeah youtube if you like the show tonight uh, i don't know too many other toy shows that just had a surprise special guest host just take over i mean i'm sure it's been done uh, maybe many times but i haven't seen it if you've seen it, let me know. I, I just, we had to, I, we wanted the show to go on. And, uh, you know, KJ is, has, hosts his own show. I don't want to throw that on him. You have your own prep to do every other Thursday. Um, so I'll, I'll say this. And, yeah. and I, I don't want to uh, speak too broadly or too much about that other stuff that's going on too. But um, I'm holding it down um, for my friends, there, for my toy family here at Toy Kind of Mood. And so you're going to, See me a bit more often, for at least for the next few weeks or months. So there's that. Because I got love for these dudes. And, um, yeah, we're just going to have a fun time. We're going to have a fun time. That's, dude, that's like but, a major blow-away announcement. But, but I'll, but I'll we'll, we'll save yeah. that for, for HQ chat. 
No, for sure. But the fact that you said that on air means uh, like the world to me. You know, I always I've been begging you to always be in every episode every week. You <laughs> bring the knowledge, you bring the fun, you got the flair and everything like it. You, well, there's no one like you. And, and here's the thing. And you'll never believe me, Travis, because I don't I told you a thousand times you don't believe me. Um, Got love for you, dude. Like you do this shit for real. And we all pay attention to that. Not just Zen spec and me, but all of us. There's a reason we're all here, bro. You know, so it's not, you know, I got, I love, I got love for all y'all, you know, and everyone in the chat. Thank you for joining us. We're going to have a great time. This is going to be a fun spring. I can't believe it's already April. What the hell? And yeah, enjoy WrestleMania this weekend. Enjoy your uh-huh. figs, man. Wait till you see, wait till you see what I do with, with all this stuff. I'm not even going to show you. Just, just wait. <laughs> Well, maybe you'll maybe you'll show us next Wednesday. Maybe we should do a WrestleMania episode. I got a couple guests. I'd love to have you on if you're available. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. I don't we'll even know if I'm available yet, but if we'll I am, that. we'll see that for backstage. We will. Yeah. We will. But you know, I got. I got to take a it. shit. We gotta. We gotta finish this. Look, Baldy. I'll let you close the show. Close us off. Hit us home. Bring us God. home, baby. Listen, I I'm gonna close the show just by saying. I do not know how to close a show. So <laughs> I had a lot of fun here tonight. Thank you so much, Trav, for thinking of me to kind of step in here. I, I always have great banter with you. Uh, we have a great back and forth. You're you're more creative than you think you are. Um, one of the best MCs out there. Uh, David, you know how much I love your fucking work. I'm just a huge fan. KJ, there's people that I've sent to your social media that, uh, listen, a lot of fun. So I, I, I'm i very happy to, uh, I've been asked to be on the show before, but I'm very excited and happy to be part of the ATKM family. So thank you very wow. much. I didn't and, expect uh, that at all tonight to happen, by the it, way. That's it's amazing. been a lot of fun, man. I always have Flattered. fun with you guys. It's yeah. a great banter back and forth behind the scenes. And um, it, it was a lot of fun to be here tonight. So, guys, I appreciate you guys thinking about me. And then somebody end this show because I don't know how to do it. Oh, okay.